remarkable. Um, we'll hear from our town accountant. Uh, we'll then proceed to talk about fiscal 15 town manager goals and discuss uh, the concept of Reading 2020, this sort of various working groups to help make Reading better, faster, more efficient, and uh, deliver the services and benefits that our population expects. Um, with that as a background, I will, um, if you don't mind, I'll lead off tonight with uh, the liaison reports. Um, mm -hmm. I think all of you got a copy of a letter I received from Mr. Phil Vaccaro. Uh, Phil is a former athletic director at Reading High School, presently, uh, I think, serving in a similar capacity in a nearby school system, as well as working with the MIAA, the Massachusetts Interscholastic uh, mm -hmm. Athletic Association. Uh, asking the board, me in particular, but the board uh, by extension, where we were on a proposal to um, deal with naming of the high school field. This was a topic that came up several weeks ago, and I think I mentioned to the group that I participated with uh, Reading Schools are on a similar effort, um, and I did distribute two documents to you, which Bob just <coughs> passed on uh, for me. One of them was um, the raw notes that gave rise to the finished policy. The raw notes were more expansive, more general, more um, broad. The finished school guide is on point. Unfortunately, um, the school program doesn't deal with naming of a facility as much as it deals with a, an outstanding award. So it's not a matter of does it, the individual meet a certain threshold. It's do these groups of, of persons meet or don't meet a, a threshold with the intention of having a an exceptional educator, an exceptional um, staff award. So it's not a one-time, it's uh, intended to be every two, three, four years to acknowledge a group of persons. That said, there's a lot of the processes in the document that's directly on point. The, the pedigree, the references, the testimonials, the relevant educational or administrative or social background. Um, and I. I guess I would be interested in seeing the board, getting the board sense for whether <coughs> you would be inclined to try to take that raw material and tailor it into a process that we might use here, or whether you're inclined to do something else. But we, we can, as your turn comes, you know, feel free to talk about it, or we can talk about it separately. Um, anyway, that's it. That's really the only thing I want to talk about. That's something that's in our future, and uh, I've gotten three or four calls from the public, and most recently this letter from Mr. Vicar. Sorry, Bob. If I could just um, jump in on that one. Tonight on pages 18 and 19, um, as I was preparing for the storm over the weekend and cleaning my office, I found some handwritten notes um, from Peter Heckenplecker, and I just passed those along. As There's no date on them, so I don't really know. I don't have this electronically. I just had this hard copy. I thought you'd be interested to know this was a draft policy that a past board of selectmen looked at, I'm going to guess, five or so years ago. Was this ever put in place, Bob, to the best of your knowledge? No, kind of I, I know that it was not. It was uh, brought up by Peter and, and discussed. I also did, just, just for kicks, look around at some of our neighboring communities and some others to see if naming policies were common, and it was hard to find. Um, one I found <coughs> where Pete is now, actually, down on the South Shore, was a very restrictive policy. For one thing, you couldn't be living, you know, no yeah. such thing. 6-6. Six, six. Um, yeah, yeah exa exactly. It's exactly what it was. And it was extremely detailed. It must have been several pages long about very detailed, you know, naming of events, uh, locations in buildings, and so forth. Uh, and then one, one a little closer to us on the North Shore is extremely vague and basically said it's up to the Board of Selectmen to decide. Yes, it's possible. They will decide on a case-by-case -case basis. So, so you have the first two probably <coughs> lots. Yeah. So there's no real guidance. Looking for the just right one. Yeah. yeah. It strikes me the task that we're being asked to do which is kind of consistent with the way this policy from Peter's era is written, is decide not on a general policy for to be reviewed and implemented every year or every several years, but a singular event around a single singular property and a singular individual. And it strikes me that's what's different. And so writing a policy around something that's a one-of-a-kind thing is going to be really tough. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, and I wasn't here for the football field, for the football field, um, effort, but my understanding is that was protracted, it was detailed, there was a lot of backup material, and um, I don't know if those of you went through it. It seemed to me that that was never 
really ambiguous in terms of the outcome. It was more, there was really not a good process and they were kind of fumbling for what's enough, what's enough. Anyway, I'll, I'll be quiet here. Just, just to be clear, the material 18 and 19 and 20 are from Mr. Vaccaro? Mm -hmm. no. no, 18 no. and 19 no. is a prior letter from... Yeah, 18 and 19 are this or. Uh, that's and, the I'm sorry, 20 Peter 20. 18, 19, 20 are historic. And then what and about those 21? Those are Pete's handwritten and notes. And 21? Um, that one looks like it's also a... That, that might be just a summary of it. Oh. Okay. So I actually didn't see Phil's, uh, Phil's email. I, At least I, I don't remember. I scanned it and oh, sent it Oh, did you send it to me? I yes. then forwarded it. I didn't even read it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. You, okay. you gotcha. reject it if you care to. But there were three documents you have in your inbox. Phil's letter, the, right. the, the finished school policy. It's got a bunch of edits, so obviously it was still in some flux. But the, and then the input <clears> to that, which was more idea-based generation. So. I think I marked that one, read after shoveling and didn't quite get to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously I impressed you may you wait all. a while. That would be right now for me. <laughs> After shuffle. After shuffle. Marcy, comments? Uh, no, I, I have no comments. No, no, no comments other than the fact that there's an awful lot of snow out there. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin? Um, just to talk about um, what you brought up, I think it's definitely important for us to have some kind of set of guidelines. You know, we're talking about naming, Absolutely. putting someone's name on it for, I, I would assume, we don't retract names. From, from fields and from uh, from these naming rights, right? So this is a forever thing? Correct. I suppose you could. You could. Would be, the, the problem would be if the process was good to put their name up there, they shouldn't. Hope right. so, yeah. So, you know, I, I think it's definitely worth our while to look into this a little bit more. And certainly, I, I'm always a fan of getting as much information as I can. What does someone else do? What, what hiccups have they run into with the process they've run through? You know, uh, looking back on some uh, some historical um, right above it as well. So I think it's important that we do have something that we come up to. I know it's tough to be, you know, lump it all into one, but I think there's definitely guidelines you could probably probably come up with and put in place that can allow enough gray area decisions along those of those routes to come up with a, <coughs> an effective solution for naming. Maybe if time permits tonight, we, see, we might have an early agenda. If at the end of it, um, we might dive back into the school policy and see if there's a way to at least frame our thoughts around that the criteria that they've used or, or find out where it doesn't fit. Hmm. The one thing I'll say is I, I know that John Halsey is quite passionate about this and I've he heard. is not here this evening. I've heard. So, well, so it would it would be a good idea to, to have him here for this. You'll always have to have him back, I understand <laughs> that, but we might actually um, be able to get a little bit of work done even in his absence. Sure. Don? Dan? Excuse Mr. Me. Chairman, uh, yes, last Thursday, uh, February 5th, I attended the uh, most recent meeting of the Early Childhood Space Committee. Uh, we received an update uh, kind of on our mission and where we're heading. Uh, essentially, it has turned to a near-term focus on portables. So uh, there was a discussion about uh, exposition from the superintendent on the reasons for the portables. All that will be discussed at the town meeting on uh, February 23rd. We won't be meeting again as a committee until March 12th and to chart the path forward. Uh, it's going to be more of a long-term look and in conjunction with the new standing building committee. So it was a kind of a brief meeting, not a lot of uh, new things, but that's the map forward at this point. And a school committee meeting tonight as well on this topic? I saw they had a meeting posted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, tonight oh, and yeah. Thursday night. Right, I think, oh, um, I think right. they have another meeting Thursday right. night as well. Oh, I think it's uh, informational sessions are holding for right. town meeting. <laughs> that's right, that's right. right. Yep. Uh, one other point, uh, and Bob, I emailed you on this. I received a call from a neighbor of a, uh, an elderly person who was not notified till I guess they got the reverse 911 call Sunday evening about the trash not being put out the next day this week. They'd already put it out, had to come back, and a bit of a strain. I don't know if there's a way to break apart the school and the town notifications, Bob. If we're ready to go earlier. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Six, yeah. I don't know if the trash park can be done any earlier because folks do take it out. Yeah, absolutely could if we had decided. Yeah. That was the thing. But it, we had, let me put it this way, we had decided we didn't have confirmation from JRM yet that they would agree with that. Yeah, sure. So. Okay. So you've got uh, irons in the fire that you have to wait for. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure we're doing the best we can. And uh, what I've seen around town, uh, town staff and contractors are keeping up as well as I can with this snow. It's really remarkable. Yeah. yeah. It is. Okay, um, 
Any public comment? I know the RMHS robotics <laughs> team has arrived, but any... Well, any we're slowly arriving. The robot okay. isn't here. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's in the car. I see. <laughs> you need a long extension cord, huh? <laughs> no, it doesn't. We have plenty of mechanical things here if you want to just try to whip on the <laughs> Well, you have a business team right now. The mechanical team is on the Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> this is sales. The product team is outside. <laughs> <laughs> I know how that works. <laughs> Vaporware. <laughs> um, Bob, any comments? I'll just do a few things and you tell me when you need me to stop. Um, on page 16 and 17, I thought you'd be interested. Um, there's 712 communities in the United States that have complete streets policies in place. And uh, Reading was recently voted as tied for sixth. Now, don't have the kids listen to this, but cutting and pasting other policies you see does really well as we tied with three <laughs> other communities in our area. That virtually we have the same wording for all four communities, not okay. surprisingly, and the same MAPC representation. Bob had said that the pen is mightier than the sword, but the cut and paste is mightier That's than right. the pen. That's right. So I thought that was interesting. Um, also, on tonight's handout, it's towards the end, on the 22nd, just to put in your calendar, June 13th, yep. um, just today came out as Reading Lions Club's annual Friends and Family Day. So there's something to look forward to in the winter. <laughs> Sounds good right about now. No. It'll probably be really hot that day. Well, I'll take it. January, uh, June 13th. Yeah. Yep. It's like Massachusetts so had a, a little great earlier. Some years they've done it at the tail end of school. This is a little earlier. Of course, you'll be going to school until <laughs> August. We will be going to school. Save some I included in your packet over the weekend a fairly lengthy update from the engineering division. They're mm -hmm. starting to yep. do this, which yep. is great. Mm -hmm. um, you ask them to do something and they're not going to do a short thing, so that's you know, several pages. But, um, you know, this helps me as well as it's going to help you and the whole community. I, I guess they put this in different formats on the website, but no one has the time to go to the website and read through all the different links. So this is a really nice document they're going to update um, as needed, but at least once a month. Um, and they're meeting now weekly to discuss this as a group, and they've never done that before. So this is in the last month or two they've changed. and. Um, you know, I find that I don't put this kind of information in front of you nearly as often as I should, and this is a way where it's going to be much easier to do that instead of going and interrogating them all the time. So hopefully that's helpful. Um, you know, I learned some things uh, that I didn't know uh, and found out the hard way through the community that some projects were delayed, for instance, you know, the playground um, over by the train station. So. And the only other comment I want to make is, um, is I want to thank the community. Since we were last here in the last storm, and I mentioned that Public Works was really uh, doing the best they could, um, I'd say it's about a four to one ratio of um, compliments that have come in to me good. over complaints, which is probably unprecedented yeah. in, uh, in the history of the Commonwealth for snow. Um, it's really been very impressive, and in some cases, folks left a couple of voicemails that I forwarded down to the guys, and I can't even begin to tell you how far that goes. When oh, yeah. you've been working yes. for 24 hours or, or 36 <laughs> hours, and you get a, a compliment um, from someone in, like that, it's, it's really good. And um, you know, next time you see an orange truck go by Thursday night or Friday, you know, sh wave your shovel and salute at you, and they'll <coughs> do a better plowing job if they, if they know you like them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one comment we do get from time to time, and I'm certainly a victim of it too, so no one's immune is I just shoveled, why did you just plow me in again in my driveway? <laughs> um, this, this, it's, it's mother nature, there's nothing they can do. If they could do it on purpose, I can assure you mine would even be worse. It's, <laughs> it's, it's definitely not an art or a science, it's completely random. It really depends on where you are in the street. If you're more at the end of the street, you're gonna get more volume plopped into your driveway. Um, the more you shovel, the more you will get because it's seeking an opening in your driveway. Or if you live on Oakland Road. <laughs> or, yes, Oakland Road <laughs> would be a really bad place. If you can shovel all the way to the end and just leave you know, the end part, but then you have to shovel all of it at and once. And that's just what so I've been doing lately. I have done that. <laughs> yes. just, just, to put a, just to put a little trick out there for folks, if you listen, mm -hmm. I do this all the time. Um, it helps when you have a snowboat. So yes. I, I go, I know the path that they're coming down, yeah. I'll dig in two or three feet and then leave a little lip right up my driveway. Mm. So as they're coming down the street, all that snow gets plowed into that two or three feet mm. and the lip stops it. Yeah. And then you only get a little bit yeah. left thereafter. Just saying. 
<laughs> yeah. At a snowblow, it's easy. Shovel. Uh, that's one for not doing it. I don't know. You can't do it. <laughs> oh, here comes our robot. I did a little of that this time, mostly out of laziness, and it actually worked quite well. It works well. Yeah. Kevin's real estate tricks. Yeah. <laughs> um, real quick, did a lot of those um, uh, comments come in from C Click Fix? Several have, yes. Okay. Yes. I know I used it once to. Did you? Uh, yeah. To, to I got emails, I got voicemails, they get emails and voicemails, and I did hear C Click Fix was used a few times. Though, okay. So, yeah. This is C-Click Plow, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bob, the, the summary that George provided, mm -hmm. um, is there a way in your mind that that could be put on the web as a status document that's updated with either progress or some other metric that, I'm not trying to paralysis by analysis, but is there something that provides status that would provide changes over time or some sense of progress? I, I asked, it's funny you say that. We, we think alike. I asked for the very same thing the first time I saw their document. I said, okay, this is war and peace. I, don't, I want a one-page <laughs> summary of everything yeah. that I can just see and understand and give me gauges. We're halfway done, we're three-quarters done, and here's all the projects. So, A milestone yeah. charter. Yeah. They, they must yeah. have something of this sort um, internally for budgeting or execution. or. I think it's more, they're engineers. They're complicated. Oh. <laughs> You're asking for simple. Is it possible? Yes. Is it easy? Probably not. <clears throat> but I, I agree. Uh, you know, for someone like me that wants to just glance and understand, mm -hmm. it would be ideal. But I will say, this is a phenomenally great start. Yeah. I mean, it is. I'm you thinking. You need all the information before you can get Once to the Once you summary, do this, so. then the summary maybe even should be done by a non engineer. Yeah. I'm thinking more of the public who yeah. wonders where the money goes and what, what we're doing. It's okay. a way to kind of illustrate that on the web. but. Maybe yeah. that's a second pass. Another way of talking about our accomplishments, right, that we don't talk about enough. Mm -hmm. It's accomplishments, but also status, right? Yeah. Speaking of accomplishments, mm -hmm. has this press release actually gone to the papers? The, the uh, complete, complete streets? Complete streets? No. No, it okay. just came in over How the weekend. How about the AAA rating? No. Okay, Bob. <laughs> Oh, no, actually, that may have. The AAA know. one, you don't have to wait for the... Uh, I don't know if we ever did the debt issue. We might not have. I, I too think much we need snow. to do that one. Okay. <laughs> we, we should send that one to the Globe as well. We're one yeah. of the very few communities in the Commonwealth. That's, I think that's just phenomenal. That's you know? true. There's a saying called celebrate your successes because, yes. you know, they only come few and far between and, and there's right. a lot of work in every one of them. So get Good. some PR for them. Good organizations Absolutely. do do that. Yep. Okay. Hmm. Um, I that's all. Thank you. Uh, the noise in the room and the increased head count <laughs> can only mean one thing. The robot has arrived. Uh, well, Excellent. tomorrow's technology leaders have brought their latest toy. So, without any further ado, I'd, Come on up. if the robotics club would want to take front and center. And if you don't mind introducing all of yourselves. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <coughs> <laughs> While you're here, they'll also scan all your PCs, rid them of viruses, <laughs> <laughs> and upgrade your hardware. <laughs> Before you start, I, this is a different box than I last saw you with, right? Last time you had the beach ball device? Yes. Yeah. This is, yeah. this is yeah. 2.0? I'm a junior, and this is my second year on the team, and I'm the mechanical lead. How many seniors? Where are you guys going to school next year? Um, up in the air right now. Still waiting to hear back from the top ones. My top ones are Northeastern and Tufts. 
Pittsburgh. They're both good schools. Yeah. And um, I'm still waiting to hear back on a couple more, but most likely the uh, University of North Carolina. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so first off, we want to tell you a little bit about FIRST. That's the overall like organization. So FIRST stands for, for the Inspiration and Recognition of Science and Technology. We are the fourth level of FIRST. We participate in FRC, which is FIRST Robotics Competition. Um, it's kind of known as the varsity sport of the mind because of all that we do. Um, overall, FRC is a huge community with thousands of students, tens of thousands of teams, and multiple countries involved. So you really see that once you progress further on, there's a big event at the end of the season called Worlds, and you have to qualify to get there. Our first year we qualified, and there were other countries there too, which is really cool. It's a huge community. Um, so what we do throughout the season is we fundraise, build, and then compete. Um, so we're mentored by professional engineers and um, yeah, professional people pretty much <laughs> to learn the best. We have business mentors and technical mentors, so we really get both sides of the scope. Um, we build and compete with the robot of our own design. We have six weeks to build the robot. We're given our challenge in January, and we have until next week, actually, mid-February, to build the robot, which is why we're kind of stressed right now. <laughs> um, so through this program, it opens lots of opportunities. We learn from the best, and we gain real-world experience. And we're also, um, we can gain lots of scholarships through it. We qualify for millions worth of scholarships, which is really cool. Um, so we operate like a corporate engineering team. We kind of run like a small business. We have to build, fundraise, and do everything, mostly the students with just help from our mentors. Almost like a startup. You need to get your <laughs> seed funding. And yeah. Okay, so the mission of FIRST, I kind of spoke to this earlier, is to inspire, not to educate. So it's really about inspiring students to get into the STEM subjects or the business, if that's what they want to do. Um, it's not just about building the robot. It's about how to get there. I talked about with the fundraising and the building and the finance and all of that. Um, it, yeah, so pretty much with teamwork, dedication, and leadership, that's how we move on and how we succeed and what we learn through the program. Okay, so a little bit about our team specifically. A lot of what we do is we promote STEM initiatives and outreach. So what we've been doing is a bunch of the team members mentor FLL teams, which is the first Lego League in Reading, which is really fun. They're middle school teams and elementary school teams. They actually had their big competition last weekend, which was really cool to take part in. Um, we're doing some outreach with the Library Tech Week, as well as with Girl Scouts coming up, so that's exciting. Um, another main mission of ours is to encourage collaboration with our mentors and students, so it's about working together and learning from the best. Um, we gain life skills through our work, um, which is really cool because that's where we'll end up. We'll end up in professional jobs and world, in, in the real world, so we really learn from that. Um, one main thing we look forward to is the innovation and creativity of the team. Um, one of our main, or one of our most exciting days is the brainstorming week. So when it's kickoff event, we have all the kids from our eighth grade junior members to our seniors working together and brainstorming for the team. So it's really about creating the communities within the team community, school, as well as all the different teams around the world, all the different other first teams. All right, so a little bit about our team as a structural combination, not just what we do in general. <coughs> so the first year, our rookie year, obviously we didn't have a lot of people because not a lot of people knew what was going to happen. So we had about 18 mm -hmm. students sign up, and about eight of them were working every day on the robot, so it was like, they had constant hands-on and they were very busy and always get busy and they had five mentors to help out with this and so next year we pretty much doubled what we had so the students were doubled so from about 18 to 30 and we had almost again doubled uh, active teammate their team members so we had we were a little less overwhelmed with what was going on because we had more hands on the robot and Stuff. And we expanded our mentor base by three mentors, which helped give some of the mentors that were there every day uh, reprieves so that they could do other stuff like their own jobs and not just, <laughs> just spend, <laughs> and not just be spent all day and all night thinking about the robot. And this year again, uh, 
we grew by about 15 <coughs> kids, or actually, I think maybe a little bit more than that. But um, and the, men, the we can't say who's been active because they were well. Anyway, can still be active from now until pretty much the end of the week, and so I'd say once again we probably about doubled the active participants. So once again, it gives people like the leads a break and have that know that we're in competent hands to leave them in, and we pretty much doubled our mentor base, which is awesome. Which means that the mentors can switch off days and have a set schedule and relieve some of the pressure of having to be there every day to help us out. Can I ask a question? Who are your yep. companies or your mentors from? Um, we have uh, Teradyne and Textron and where else? Uh, Epsilon. 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 Uh, I robot. Pfizer. That's your problem. <laughs> uh, UTC. <coughs> So, all over. <laughs> uh, we have a programming mentor from uh, Mass General Hospital. Yep. Oh, okay. So, we come from all the different yeah. places. Yeah, it's a nice variety. And, yeah. Always good to plug your sponsors, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> There's more where that came from, right? Of course. <laughs> all right, so a little bit how we formed. So, it really started off when the first Labor Week came to Reading in 2007. And so as that grew, um, the first LL students moved to the high school in 2012. So <coughs> the people were graduating and they were like, hey, what did we want to, we don't really have anything to do anymore because they can't join FLL, they're too old. So um, FRC was started, or the FRC team here was started to kind of alleviate that problem. and have the people who are in FLL and so on to explore robotics, at least for the first year anyway, it was just robotics, but um, we're expanding that so that other people can come. But it was started and our team was kind of born. So and then our first year, we were really new to FRC and we really were just about the robot, as I mentioned earlier. There wasn't really a whole lot of business side or uh, planning involved at all. <laughs> um, it was more tinkering and building, so it was like, hey, that works. Stay with that, because you know, it works. No real plan involved. <laughs> and it was not really organized at all, because everybody had to do everything, because we were kind of small. And we were focused really on building and competing with that, and we're kind of moving away from that. We still have to build and compete, obviously, but we're getting our name out there and presenting to everybody and saying thanks to all our sponsors and stuff like that. <laughs> so. yep, that? And then our accomplishments, so what we've achieved in the past two years that we've been a team. So the first year, uh, we competed in the Boston Regional. We ranked 12th overall, which is excellent for a first year team. We had absolutely well, I wouldn't say we had no clue, but we didn't have a, know a lot what we were doing. And we actually became a alliance captain, and, well, that happened. <laughs> um, we didn't really know what we were doing. We got to the quarterfinals, though, so that was great. And we actually got the Rookie All-Star Award, which qualified us for Worlds, which is where we met all the teams from different countries that first year. And it was excellent. And we also got the highest rookie seed award, which is two prestigious awards for a first year team to get. And it basically means that we were the best of the rookie teams that year. And they qualified us for the St. Louis World Championship, which we went in and competed in. And it was a great experience for our team because it was something that I don't think we even thought of being able to get in that first year. And then uh, we actually competed in an off-season event called the Beantown Blitz at Northeastern. We ranked third overall in there, and once again, that's pretty excellent for a first-year team. And we once again became an alliance captain, which I think we were a little bit more prepared for at that time. And we got to the quarterfinals again, so 
a great rookie year for us, and that was really nice. So then, uh, 2014, the regional events kind of came a little bit differently last year. We actually got to compete in two, so it made it really nice, and we got more experience in like driving and stuff. And uh, so we went at the Rhode Island district where we actually won overall, so that was excellent with our teammates. We won the entire thing, so that was excellent. And we were ranked 17th out of something like 40 robots, so once again, great first kind of competition for our second year team. We came out strong, and we continued that with the Northeastern District that we came upon, and we ranked 24th, so a little bit worse, but still great for us, and uh, we got to the quarterfinals that time. So it was really nice. And through those two, it uh, allowed us to go to the New England Championship. We got enough points in those two districts to get to the New England Championship. And we were among the 53 best teams in New England, so it was great. And we ranked 35th out of the fifth, or 35th out of the 53 teams. And that was really a nice standing because we, we were with the best teams in New England, and it was nice. So. That was our accomplishment for the two years. And so this year we decided, hey, we really need to work on the structure of our team. So we came with, up with this over the summer and decided to put them into five or six different bodies. And it was programming, electrical, mechanical, pneumatics, design, and business, where business had subcategories of fundraising, accounting, and marketing, because business is just well, very complicated, and you need to have subsections of that. And then we also had scouting and strategy, which comes a little later during the competition season. So uh, programming, I think we all know that that's kind of just like coding and making stuff work on the robot after it's all built, said built. And so that usually comes towards the end, where we really have everything electrically and mechanically sound, so we have we have them currently testing on an older robot, but they can't really do anything for this year's robot unless there's something actually built for them to test on. So, oh, <laughs> <laughs> so the electrical and mechanical teams are really the forefront of the beginning of the year anyway, so the electrical gets the, I think of it as like the white blood and circulation system that's like in the human body. It really sends all the signals and tells the robot what to do, and programming is like the brain of that. So the electrical just sends the signals that the programmers tell them to do. How do your teams interact with one another? Yeah. How do they do that? So uh, programming has, we have this, uh, well, there's a computer right here, mm -hmm. and that gets signal from a wireless router. And so there's joysticks like we have over there behind us on the drumstick. I meant people wise. Uh, okay. People wise? So, uh, people wise, okay. it's very um, mushed together, I want to say. We don't have, like, over there looking across yeah. them, they don't have specific teams exactly. Mm -hmm. Most of the programmers just work on programming, but they're also allowed to do whatever else they want. Like okay. I'm the business lead, but I also do a lot of, I work with mechanical stuff if they need sure. me. Um, the teams are kind of just team leads, and then how we have it structured or how we want to have it structured is that each team lead will have an assistant who they'll train to take over their position. Mm -hmm. But everyone else, they're just trying to learn what they like to do, and that's kind of how we want it to be structured. Yeah, the only team that's really more set in stone is programming because they need the skill of programming. They need, they program. need the <laughs> prior knowledge of that. Sure. So, okay, is there somebody in charge of integrating all these things? If it's not um, yes. Yeah. The, the two co-presidents are yeah. kind of the people that go to and like, hey, what can we do? Yep. At least at the beginning anyway. And then <laughs> those happen. So, and then pneumatics is the uh, air pressure and controlling that. So we have like this year, we have a pneumatic arm that goes up <coughs> and down off of that because electrical and motors would be too slow. So we just wanted something really fast and up and down motion. And well, design team is probably the most important because they come up with like the idea and 
kind of develop it the most, and we actually cut up an entire picture of the robot. Right? Mm -hmm. That's not the robot for this year, but um, that's what happens in the design team. We make the plan, see if it'll work like theoretical wise, and make it padded to make sure it all fits together and stuff. And then business is business. Uh, you fundraise because you know robots are expensive and we need money. Uh, we need someone obviously to make sure our books aren't in the negative, so we can actually function as a team and not be in debt. Um, and then marketing is like paying or promoting our robot and our team in general and getting our name out there into newspapers and all other stuff to make sure that people know who we are. And then the scouting and strategy, as I said before, is kind of last because you can't really, well you can strategize in the beginning and figure out what you're going to do with the robot at the beginning. And then the scouting part is saying how can we work well with other robots and that really can't be shown until the competitions roll around and then we have to really be on top of all of that because if we become an alliance captain, we need to know what's going on. How big was your budget then? There we go. Oh, so, <laughs> yeah, that's what we're talking about. so, as Tim said, robotics is very expensive, but contrary to what most people think, the um, robot is actually a very small part of the expenses. Most of it is um, fees for the competition and stuff. And so, our rookie year, our budget was about $24,000, and most of that was spent on <coughs> fees and also uh, travel. And so our second year, we only spent about $16,000, but the main difference between the two years was our first year we went to uh, Nationals in St. Louis, which that... That's the spread. That's the range. <laughs> 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 yeah. And so, yeah, and so this year, uh, it's nine thousand because it's current. We haven't spent that much that yet, as of but yeah, January. yeah, as of January. Yeah. But we still, if we progress more, and depending on what we do in the off season, that can grow. And then, so this year actually, we've raised a lot more money than we have in any previous year. We've raised thirty-seven thousand to date, and the yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so that money allows us to do more things and to go and if we do travel to St. Louis, to, uh, it allows us to bring more people and subsidize it more and also to do other things as a team. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, we try and mo our most of our money comes from corporate sponsors and we're trying to increase that primarily. And then we also get some money from, uh, a little bit of money from just fundraising in town and some from like friends and family. But yeah, most of it is from corporate sponsors. So it's interesting because we have to like write grants to companies and stuff to, yep. so it gives us that sort of real, real world experience. It also, by going to corporate sponsors, it alleviates the um, financial strain on families. And then I want to point yeah. out that the purple at the top, that's all pledged money. So it's if we qualify, they're paying for our registration, which is a huge portion of our budget. Oh, that's good. And so, uh, some of the stuff we've done in the community is, as Caitlin talked about a bit earlier, um, some of our team members have mentored uh, FLL teams, and um, some other things we do are, we have two junior members who are eighth graders in middle school who are part of the team, and so it's cool because they get to go up and experience what it's like uh, before high school. Absolutely. And it's also good for us because it allows us to have some team members who will grow up to have more experience and be more knowledgeable. And then, so we also uh, participate in events like the Reading Educational Foundation Festival of Trees, where we donate a tree, and things like the Friends and Family Day and the Reading Street Fair, where we set up a, a tent and we, um, we're demoing a robot. And we also have done demonstrations for various sponsors as well. And then some upcoming stuff we have is the, um, as Caitlin said, the Reading Library Team Tech Week, where we're going to do a workshop and have them build little tiny robots. And then we're going to do something with the Girl Scouts and also some more stuff at the middle school as well. All right, so every 
year we get a new challenge, and this year's challenge is called Recycle Rush. Um, so the game Recycle Rush is played by two alliances, which are made up of three separate teams. So for example, our team would be paired with two other random teams, and we would play against another three teams. Um, so the game is played um, by scoring um, using totes and recycling bins. So as you can see in this picture, the yellow are totes, the green are recycling bins. And <laughs> um, and you get points depending on how high um, you have stacked your totes and recycling bins. Um, we also have pool noodles that are given to us, which is supposed to represent litter. Um, it's very recycling themed. And we get points for either recycling litter or shoving it into a zone called the landfill zone, which is on the field. And the game is played in both an autonomous and teleoperative period. So at the beginning of the match, we'll have 15 seconds where we have a pre-programmed um, program running. So we're not in control of the robot, the robot is controlling itself. Um, and then we also will have approximately two minutes of a tele-operated period in which we have students actually driving the robot around the field and trying to stop the totes. So this is our robot for the year. Um, well, the design for our robot. <laughs> <laughs> it's top secret. Yeah. You can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> you can all, we can only show it to you for a brief second because no one can know. Um, <laughs> um, and then also, um, in addition to all of our regular events this year, we are actually also hosting a district here in Reading. Um, it's going to be held in the Reading High School Field House. Um, and it's going to be from Friday, March 6th to Sunday, March 8th. Um, so this is the first year we're doing this. Um, it's been interesting trying to plan it. Um, we have about 40 different teams that are coming to Reading, including us. Um, each team has approximately 30 students on it, um, several mentors, and all of their families will also be coming to Reading. Um, we are both hosting and competing in it. So it's going to be a very stressful weekend for us. Um, we're expecting about 4,000 people to be coming just from FRC. Um, and it's also going to be um, an opportunity for everyone in the writing community to come see what we're about and what um, robotics is about. Any tie-in with any of these in the local colleges, whether it's Tufts or MIT? Or Some teams um, do actually partner with various colleges. We have not done so yet. Um, I don't right. think we don't have a yeah. yeah. um, but, but there are several teams. For example, there's a team that's run out of WPI, um, where WPI has the Mass Academy of Math and Science high school students that are all mentored by the college students. And there are a few other teams that do that. Yeah, there's one out of Northeastern yeah, that Eastern. their shop is in Northeastern and they get a lot of North, uh, mentors. They're well. helping us a lot with the competition yeah. they also host <laughs> That's very helpful. Um, so at the competition, it's going to be a great way to showcase um, the Reading community. So um, first off, we've asked some of the local FLL teams to come show their robots off at our competition and give them some recognition too because we really want them to, first of all, come to our competition and also um, show them that you know you can do this stuff and this is what um, you can lead up to. Um, we're also going to be supporting the Reading Food Pantry and having a food drive going on during our competition um, and having a bunch of local businesses um, helping us with food vending, volunteering, and promoting the event. So it's going to be a great way to showcase all of Reading. Um, so, if you would like to support us, which I hope you do, <laughs> um, you can help us by promote, promoting our event in the community, um, so making connections with various sponsors in the community and possibly advertising around town for our um, competition. Um, also, if any of you are interested, we do need potential judges at the competition who would actually be watching the matches and making sure that no one is getting penalties or judging for various awards that you can get there, such as the Chairman's Award, which is about business more than the robot. Um, we're also looking to get some sort of police detail. Um, we, there's a drama presentation at the high school at the same weekend. We're wondering if there's any way that you could help us possibly combine the costs <laughs> <laughs> instead of hiring two. Um, we look at the snow room. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also come watching us compete and just seeing what we're about. So, thank you.
Um, Do you have any questions? Well, the first question I have for you in, in that regard is, if someone wanted to make a donation, did you guys have something set up? Is it uh, by mail, website, or? Uh, we have our website, okay. provocates.org. Okay, do you have that on, you can put up on the computer by any chance? I can write there it you down. Write, write <laughs> it up there, perfect. And that's that's one you definitely want to have up there. Okay. I believe there's a page on there that oh, links to our PayPal account. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Donate yes. Yes. under About Us. And it's a 501c3 Reading mm -hmm. oh, engineering team, so it's for the entire league. Oh, tax deductible, that's F great. <laughs> but, yeah. yep. Okay, so if anybody listening at home wants to donate, it is right there. Where it's educational, there's a potential for matching, too. That's what exactly. Yeah. 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 i got to imagine every mom and dad that works at an organization anywhere they are sure is a candidate for the corporate country. Probably <laughs> in there. Oh, yes. We have a list of all like, the, where the parents work. We like go out and we're like, donate money to 501c3s. Well, why don't you uh, show us what you have? Yeah. 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 You don't have a version with a snowplow, do you? Yeah. <laughs> no, we we can install it. Snow. Okay. Snow. Melt snow, maybe? If you could work on one that clears your roof off, off. that would <laughs> really be amazing. <laughs> yeah, that would be very nice. It might be a little too heavy. <laughs> I was doing the roof stuff with the roof earlier today. So, 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 so just to clarify, this actually is not our robot for the year. Um, the base of it has actually been a sort of testing robot for the programming team. And the top of it is actually from our rookie year in um, 2013, where we were asked to shoot Frisbees. It's kind of a that thing's like a baseball pitcher. You don't want to be hit by it anywhere below the okay. back. Okay. We, we don't have we don't have any mechanics wired up for the top, so you're in no danger. Gun is not loaded. I've heard that. Looks like a real gun. Fire at will. Which ones will? The tires are inflated to the obligatory 12.5. Yes. They cut it apart, so that then rewiring it. Yeah, we, we just put this back together. <laughs> Penelope, huh? Yep. Yes. yes. That's the name. Penelope. Or at least half of Penelope. And the, uh, yeah, the mentors that, that you guys have, have they, have they helped you a lot from like a structure of your of your team, how it's set up? Or that's something that you guys all kind of came up with. You thought it was cool having the record set. We definitely knew that we needed to change it because before it was kind of just come and go. And as the season last year progressed, we kind of saw the NACO leader standing out. So over the summer was when, or at the end of the year after the competition, that's when we kind of decided that we needed a structure and kind of like a goal for students to go, like, go towards to yeah. the leadership position. Um, so we created the structure and then had applications. That's great. And, yeah, it's working out. The mentors ultimately made the final decision, but um, there weren't a lot of students that had like stood out previously, so it wasn't like a very competitive <laughs> selection. Okay. It's, we hope that it's going to be. It seems that. like it's going in that direction. Yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. it definitely yeah. needs. Especially to go with in that almost direction. 50 kids. Evidence that this has helped uh, other past graduates in college or applications. Um, so we only have a couple who are now in college, really. Um, but I think people. as it grows, it's definitely going to help kids stand out. You can come over I know some too. colleges on their own. They don't hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, the Frisbee party like is to save the But do you guys want to, if someone want to explain what kind of wheels? Yeah, yeah. those wheels are yeah. there. That's, that's, that's really, really cool. You guys ever seen RoboCop? <laughs> our wheel doesn't end well. <laughs> <laughs> yep, our wheels they actually have a fun name. It's called Mechanum. And they basically, these rollers here do not move it. <laughs> the wheels here have rollers on them that spin. And they actually allow us to turn in any direction instead of wow, it being really cool. Instead of it being traditional like wheels that go straight back and then we turn like that. These can actually go in a diagonal movement. Well, basically, they um, because of the way the rollers are, when you drive forward, the wheel actually wants to go at a 45 degree angle. Mm -hmm. So when you control, and all the wheels are con controlled individually. So by doing that, you can actually make it go. Like you can make it strafe to the left or anything. You can make it in any direction you, you want. You can make it really instead go of just forward in any direction. The only 
I wouldn't say it's a bad Can sign. Can you take notes? Product notes. Too inspection here. <laughs> yeah. The only downside. I've got a non-disclosure. <laughs> well, that's why you couldn't see this year's robot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, the difference really between these wheels and traditional ones is that um, because these want to go at a 45 degree angle, some of the pushing force is lost and we can be pushed all around. So if you've got a really good driver, you can just spin off, but it's not meant for plowing. Uh, if we had the other wheels, <laughs> Stop, it's sorry. more. Let's go with this one. Don't worry, we could just switch them to the other wheels. And we could plow. There you go. <laughs> How many hours in this build? Uh, oh, God. Uh, so we build over the span of six weeks, so we get our uh, we get our assignment. When was it? January 3rd? January 3rd. This year? Yep. Um, and we have, from that moment that it's introduced to us, exactly six weeks to design and build our own robot. Mm -hmm. Next and two steps. Yeah. yeah. So, so we have school, midnight nice. deadline <laughs> Tuesday next week. Um, we will probably be there. Yeah, if you come at 11.59, you'll see us panicking. Yeah. <laughs> we'll probably be at the school packing up until like 1. I think that was what was happening last year. Yeah, I, think one, you got home I think I got home at like 1.30, maybe. But we meet pretty much every night from 7 to 9.30 until it becomes closer to the end. That's when we start staying later until 10.30, 11. So we well, yeah. late and then anyway. so that's Monday through Friday, then we met Saturdays. Like nine to four, and now we're including Sundays on that too. So it's a, it's a big time it's yeah, you guys have uh, so it's a small budget for the actual build, right? Yeah, it's it's only is, that pretty, 4, is that pretty universal 4, for uh, for all the teams involved? Yeah, yeah you're you can, only allowed yeah. four thousand. Oh, you're only allowed four thousand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the rest of it goes towards registration fees and travel. Yeah. Like. Buses. And some teams have two robots, so they have their actual robot that they compete with, and then a duplicate practice robot. Now, can they? Can they spend so, four thousand on each, or is it yes. four thousand? Yes. Well, yes. So it's four thousand okay. on each, but they can only compete with one. But, when but it they helps bag, to have a practice. Right, Here's the thing: that that on February seventeenth, sure. uh, your actual robot has to go in the bag, and you can't touch it till you compete. But if you build an extra one, you can use it for programming and for, pre and for driving practice. So it's sort of a way to get around that. So fundraising does play a big factor in <laughs> oh, and yes. helping to do better in these competitions. Yeah. Yeah. What okay. you guys should tell about but then the you use resources to build two, oh. not just one. So. <laughs> Um, so this year we also moved out of our closet on the third floor that we had before. We had this tiny room about a closet. Um, <laughs> from where you're sitting yeah. to where you're sitting, that corner. That was about the size of our space, so you'd bring it out to the hallway and work on it. This year we moved down next to Dr. Doherty's room, mm -hmm. so we have a larger space and we got a CNC machine, which is oh, a big wonderful. new tool. Expensive. We got it for free, which is really nice. Um, from Northeast. What is the CNC tool? So basically, it. Uh, so it's a CNC router, which. So part of it is it has a big assembly that can move around very precisely. And then attached to that is a very fast spinning bit, which can cut through metal, wood, pretty much anything. And so you can use that to make very precision. Oh, that kind of router. So, so yeah. it's Three-axis mm -hmm. uh, machine, so you you CAD something up. I don't know if any of you CAD is just basically like uh, 3D imaging on the computer. Mm -hmm. You can then send it to the uh, to the print. CNC yeah. mill, which will then carve it out. Mm -hmm. You guys doing 3D printing also? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have a 3D printer, except we don't really use it that much because it's not great. But uh, one of our mentors has a 3D printer, and also a yeah. couple of our. our President has a 3D printer as well. And there's a few other people that have them too. Yeah. Well, this is pretty impressive. Coming yeah. from a generation where if you worked in a car, it was worth an essay in college. <laughs> <laughs> I just gotta believe this is gonna pay huge dividends. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. it's as competitive mm -hmm. as, as anything out there in the college world. And you guys are showing not only your aptitude, but your love and your, your willingness to put time into something that uh, you think is important. I think that speaks volumes. Really impressive.
and learning to work together collaboratively as that's, a team. Yeah, and that, that's thing. terrific. Yeah, the, 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 the terrific. real world applications that, that you guys are learning and going through are, are, are amazing. And the business yeah. part of it is huge. You'll be well ahead of yes. your peers. Yeah. <laughs> it, may not, it may sound like that's the product, but selling the idea and selling the sizzle before you have yeah. a steak yeah. is yeah. the <laughs> biggest part. <laughs> we really offer You don't have a Frisbee on you, do you? <laughs> I think I saw this at the, the, had this at the Fall Street Fair. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. we also right. had it at the Friends yeah. and Family Day. And, you know? Yeah. Friends we'll and family day, we we'll, we'll always have them too. So. Robockets.org. Yeah. Yep. 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 That's and, um, first is at usfirst.org. So that's the organization that we're a part of. We'll have Caitlin write that up as well. Which is, the, which is the shortest <laughs> path to manageable? <laughs> For us, it's the robockets.org. Yeah. Um, and you click on the web tab on there? Um, there's a tab that says contact us, and under there it, it, it says us? sponsor. No, I think it's. It's probably it's contact. Involved. And then it's. Yep, there's donate videos on our something. website, um, all sorts of things. We also have a Facebook page. So, and for the younger kids, we have Instagram and Twitter. So we're trying to get out for there and make our presence known. Maybe, maybe on your website, your program members can do a donate button. We yeah. do have a donate <laughs> button. No, we do have that. That's okay, on, just that is on the. Good. It's under, so the, it's under the contact us. There is a donate, a, don a PayPal button for donating. So, yeah. But really, come see the event in, in March. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's a family event. It doesn't cost anything. So. It's all day. Yeah. And it's all day, but you don't have to stay all day over two days, Saturday and Sunday. Um, and like the competitions, like, I know when I went to my first one, I was sort of expecting it to be like just like quiet and a bunch of people just like driving real boats around and stuff. But like, <laughs> It is intense. Like there's yeah. music blasting. It's like wear capes. It, it's like any other. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Team has no. Hogs. No, no I, I like the team that you. dressed up as the Wizard of Oz. Oh, yep. Yeah. They're very like, yeah. Some got the sizzle. We're there. not. We're a little <laughs> more <laughs> subtle. Yeah, we're right? yeah. a little more conservative. <laughs> Who've ever heard of Destination Imagination? Yes. Yeah. 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 This is this Tim is like the technology version of that. Yeah. There there used to be a lot of teams in town that did that. Yeah, yeah, and it is a, quite an amazing. Thing. So are your software guys always late. <laughs> no. no? <laughs> very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Trees. Nice. Yeah. That's Oops. this year's we'll design. That. 
top secret. Top secret. Top secret. Top secret. Under, yeah. <laughs> under media, you'll see someone asked me about videos. So you can see, if you just there's a drop down under media. We've got tons of photos, videos. Um, we didn't show you our video from last year's event, but that's kind of fun to watch. That is the yoga ball throwing one. You scroll down. Um, Don one is last year. This is the one from our our competition last year. It's fun to watch. Wow. And that's last year's robot. So we have, um, and the students make all the videos. They're pretty amazing. Post What's them this, on YouTube. Is there any yeah. significance to 4761? That's just oh, the, that's number the number they gave us. Yeah. That's our team number okay. in the first world. So people get known by their team names where the yeah. robot gets and also their number. So yeah. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You so much. Thank you. Sure. Thanks for Hi, everybody. Thank you. Sharon, that's going to be a tough one to follow. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing that exciting to follow. Uh, <laughs> we do finances for you. If I, if I could make a motion to step aside and let the next generation take over. Yeah. <laughs> no. Motion denied. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a good point, Bob. It's amazing how much farther the kids. Oh, it's no comparison. Later. Yeah. Well, I'm still just amazed at you know where these kids are going to go from this point forward. I mean, this the, the real world. Uh, aspect of this uh, this team, the way they put it together, structured it, yeah. and, and are out there doing things that they're going to be doing in business, or, you know, uh, and, and in this field for the rest of their lives. I mean, I never stopped with that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with, with that kind of focus and mindset. So yeah, it's, was, it's there really was impressive. No focus on collaboration yeah. when I went to high school. Yeah. I, no. you know, you know, you're an individual scholar, you know. You yeah. yeah. Well, Working it's in it's teams. It's very impressive. Or, you, or you're competing against somebody. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> It's athletics for the technologists, right? There you go. Yeah. So, teams for the technologists. Brainiacs. Okay. Um, our next uh, topic is... It's uh, going to be up there all night. <laughs> <laughs> our next topic is to hear from our town accountant and receive her report. Sharon? Sure. Grab that door. I'll get it. Oh, Jean's got it. Yeah. I definitely don't have to do that. <laughs> you know, it moves or lights up. Or, or, well, I should have come first. <laughs> tri tri AAA rating excites me. So. <laughs> so I figured I'd start by giving you kind of an update of where we stand financially speaking um, through Thursday when I checked last. Um, and we had collected about 66% of our revenues and had um, spent about 60% of our budgeted expenses. Mm -hmm. No real cause for concern there. Those seem to be – actually, the revenues are ahead of projection, so that's pretty good. So the only other thing I – failed to kind of look at on Thursday, but I looked at on today for Jeff was where we stood in snow and ice. Um, <laughs> and we Good do thing we're ahead on revenue, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We yeah. have hit the red. <laughs> um, as Shocker. of today, in the general ledger, we have uh, just yeah. about a negative 8,000, and that included the storm. It looked like a lot of the bills were in there for the storm for February 2nd and January 26th. Mm -hmm. So this storm that we just had, not in there yet, so we're definitely going more negative than that. I've heard a yeah. lot worse in other communities, though. Yeah. So. Really? Yeah. And I don't know that everything's there. There could be things that um, haven't hit yet, So, sure. but okay. we're, off, we're already yeah. negative, and so figured that should be mentioned. What's the budgeted amount? Is it like seven? It was 625, I think, so yeah. Um, we usually hmm. increase it each year, but not by a lot, and then we always usually, when we're, o when we're over, we usually transfer from other available funds. <coughs> yeah. um, as far as reporting goes, everything has been reported for fiscal 14. That would be the Schedule A, the end of year, all the free cash and the um, mm -hmm. tax recap, all that is complete. And so I can focus on the monthly closes and anything that's my day-to-day, -day, typically. Um, the audit was performed, and I have a draft of the financials. It takes me quite a bit of time to get through them. They're like 95 pages, and I like to check every number and understand where all the numbers are coming from. And so that takes a little bit of time, a little back and forth with the auditors. Uh, I don't agree where did this number come from, that sort of thing. So once I give the approval that I understand everything, that they're final, they'll issue us final financials, and I'll schedule a meeting with the audit committee. And then if you guys yep. want a, a presentation, they sometimes will do that too, depending on <coughs> who's on the audit committee and if you know who the board of selectmen liaison is on the audit committee. And is are you the, the same liaison? I am. Is that the same? You have the same person with the audit firm who did the update last time? Yes. He did an excellent job. Yeah, I they do a good job. Yeah. Come in. Yeah, so we can have them come in. I don't think they did one last year for the Board of Selectmen, but they can certainly come in. They did the audit committee. I don't think they came for – uh, they did. we did it so – last oh, year they did it. Late. It was late because yeah. – what was the reason it was I late? I don't remember, I, but it I was think, late. I think there was a little maternity issue in there. 
Yes, <laughs> that might have been it. So I think that might have had something to do with it. Because I think they sent the financials to me and I was on maternity leave. I'm like, I'm in no condition to look at these. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, my current focus is um, on budget work for fiscal 16, closing up any months that I'm behind on since I've been kind of focused on these reporting um, deliverables and um, analytical work, and whatever I have on my desk, and then any, any things that people are requesting on our day to day. We did recently do a munis upgrade mid-January. Um, mm -hmm. Gail organized it. Gail's been doing all of that. Um, and she did it early this year because we had some issues with the last upgrade. Um, and it wasn't, it didn't seem to be a problem for everybody, but in the collector's office, it was slow um, processing um, payments. And it wasn't slow and trained. So the, what we typically do is we put everything in a test environment yep. before we go live with it. And we did not notice the slowness in the test environment. Yet when we went live, it went much slower than what we're used to. They couldn't give an answer for that. The one thing we had discovered is that we were on 10-4 and I think there was only 30 other communities on 10-4 and maybe 300 communities on 10-5. And so when there were problems coming up, they were putting more mm. attention towards 10-5. And yes. so we said, let's yeah. move to 10-5 faster because whenever I'd get a, you know, if Kevin would do um, updates on a Wednesday, I'd come in on a Thursday and get calls about all kinds of things just going wrong because sometimes an update would be out there and he would accept it yeah. because we accept all, but maybe it was to address something in another community and it somehow messes up something in our. Uh, um, and so, and then we would wait a little bit while for a fix on it because we'd be on 10-4 and they'd be fixing the 10-5s first because that affected more communities. So that was part of it. When they went to 10-5 in the test environment, they didn't notice any slowness there either, but when they went live, they still don't see much improvement. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, it's only the collector's office and they're still working on it and Gail's very diligent. She doesn't mind um, rattling their cage every chance she gets, so. Um, <laughs> she's also much warmer than me on the floor. Yes, um, and so I. was I, gonna say she's not here, right? So I'm hopeful <laughs> that she'll get a resolve for some of our issues, but now that we're on 10-5, I feel like as things come up, they will be addressed faster because so many more are on that. Karen, are these are these functionality improvements or stability improvements? Are, are there benefits in this that, that you see or you might not? There wasn't much change for where we moved from 10-4 to 10-5 except for the fact that more users were on. There wasn't okay. a lot of significant right. change or improvements that I saw from what I do. There may be every time we do an upgrade, depending on how big a jump it is, if we're going to the, you know, from 10-4 to 11-4, you're going to see a lot more changes. When you're going from 10-4 to 10-5, there's not a lot of changes from the different versions from that small of a jump. And sometimes there are major changes when you jump for a bigger span from 10-4 to 11-4, I think you'd see a big um, gap. And we didn't go to the 11 versions because I think it requires us to have a more expensive SQL server, according to Kevin, and so we went to the 10-5. So that will require our capital investment, I think, on our part, part to go there for the uh, version 11. But I think that we'd want to understand why we're having problems. Because if it seems to me, well, if in the test environment wasn't that way, in the live it is, something mm -hmm. is different mm -hmm. about the test mm -hmm. environment than the live environment, and they haven't been able to identify it. And they said they've done all the comparisons, so I'm not entirely mm -hmm. sure where they're at with that. So that's a concern, but it only seems to affect the collector's offices from what I hear. Mm -hmm. um, we also have the issue with dashboard um, at the school department. They, they, they access through Citrix, and that can be a little bit slower, and they're working on that. But that's something I think we can control. This unknown that's causing the collectors a little bit of um, a hassle, we just don't know what it is, and it's been going on for a, a while. So, um, Other items I plan on working on this year is everything Reading 2020 and how manage your goals. Um, there is a GASB 54 policy, fund policy um, that I've been trying to get to, and I kind of drafted kind of a, a rough draft of it, and the auditors have provided me an example of one that has been finished by, you know, they've asked this of a lot of towns, and not many of them have completed it, because it's, you know, if that one's out there as an example, you're not really sure what do they need, what do they want, you know? So can you just give us the Cliff Notes version of what that is? Because it basically of us who don't is have the, um, numbers the, di the different fund balances are set into different um, categories mm -hmm. based on GASB 54 and it'd be unassigned, uh, mm -hmm. you know, non spendable, these different categories. Um, and they want us to detail when, when, what we consider those categories to be, what would fall in those categories, as well as the order which we spend money. Mm -hmm. um, if we have a grant and we have free cash or whatever, what is the order of which? that that money gets spent um, and so that they're so it's clear in a policy yep. um, and then also 
what reserves do we require to be held? You know, 5%, 10%. So all of that into a policy. And so I've kind of been reviewing the one that they gave me and just kind of getting some tips of what did I have in the original draft and what did they have here that I didn't touch upon and trying to do that. Haven't had time to do it, um, mm -hmm. but hopefully it'll be something I get done soon. Um, and the other thing that's on the um, agenda, uh, hopefully we get to it this year, is um, electronic billing. There's an RFP that we need to issue to see if that can move forward and get electronic billing out there for us. The only other thing that I've been involved in is the investigation of the surplus vehicles. Um, Mark Doxter was kind enough to involve me in all of the meetings regarding that. Um, the team met up several times, I want to say four or five times. Mm -hmm. Went over, I sent them everything I had and I think I couldn't believe how much they actually went through because it was quite a bit of um, yeah. information. Um, they did l review it and decide, you know, geez, we're not sure, you know, if we can make a determination. We want somebody who um, knows more about this. So they had decided pretty quickly they wanted a, a CPA firm to do some sort of review of what was there and if there was an area that needed to be addressed further or if they were satisfied that this was an isolated incident caused by a poor policy and that was all. Um, so they interviewed several different CPA firms and ended up going with Powers and Sullivan um, for agreed upon procedures engagement, not necessarily an audit, but just kind of some agreed upon things they just like looked at regarding <laughs> disposal of surplus. And it would be in three phases. The first phase would be to look at the RMLD transaction. I, and I believe the one that was here, um, the DPW dump truck that we had. Look at the backup, see if there's any holes in it and things that they think should have been looked at or any concerns that they would say on their end because they're trained to look for areas that they would drill more into because it causes them concern. And after each phase, they will be reporting back to the subcommittee about what they what their findings are. And then at that point, the, uh, the subcommittee will have the opportunity to decide, do we move forward with the next phase or do we stop because we're satisfied? So that first step is reviewing that first the first transactions that I've already kind of looked at. Yeah. The second phase is um, doing some surveying of department heads on their procedures to dispose of surplus um, and listing out all the surplus that we've disposed of in the last couple of years. And then they'll do some risk assessment and, and make a list of ones that they would like to test. They'll bring that report to the subcommittee and then the subcommittee will look at that and there'll be a risk assessment as to why they selected the ones they've selected <coughs> and then they Again, it goes back to the subcommittee, do you want to proceed? And if they proceed, they would test those in detail, the ones that they're, or they probably might, they might make some, yeah. you know, oh, well, I think five is too many, let's do three. You know what I mean? There yeah. might be some concessions that are made there. Um, and then they'll do the testing of that. And then at that point at the end, um, they would make recommendations. They would, you know, give their findings. And the recommendation could be that, you know, we, we think we need to delve deeper in that that would be another conversation for something else because that would go beyond what they have the money to do. So that's where they're at currently. Um, other than that, I don't think I had anything else to share with you unless you guys have questions for me. I have a question just on the surplus trucks that came back. Do you know if they ever did dispose of them and how much money they got for them? I haven't heard anything about them. I knew that the last I checked, they had just had them on the lot. Um, I would heard they were anxious to, to sell them, and that's why they wanted to change their policy. So I was I can certainly reach out and find out, you know, find out if they have eventually done that because the firm that I reached out to to um, identify their actual value mm -hmm. was very interested in helping us dispose of them. Right. Um, so. so, you know, they, if they're just hesitant because they're afraid they're going to mess it up again, they certainly have somebody that's willing to, to help execute it for them. So, Karen, um, when would you expect the schools in the town to get reviewed under that I would think the first phase was looking at the transactions that were the initial cause for concern which is the RMLD transaction and the dump truck so that would involve the town and RMLD in the first phase and they just recently got the money assigned to them so I don't think that any I, I'm not clear that any work has actually even been started yet so I wouldn't Thank think you. until sometime um, in late February early March would be when I'd expect they'd start the second phase Relative to your earlier comments about the, the Munis product, do you have an opinion as to what it would cost us to get current with the product and maybe add the efficiencies that are? I'd have to consult with Kevin. I'm not, you know, because it's he was saying it was a SQL server, which I'm not privy to what those. Ten grand. That's not a lot. The other yeah. thing is, 
how many communities are on that. And we that's another start, concern too. So we tr almost everybody's on five. You really don't want to be on the bleeding edge yeah. on the, the new, other mm -hmm. new versions. The other thing that we've so. kind of tried to stay away from is being the on the newest version. I think 11 is one of the newest versions, and that that sets us up to be working out their bugs. Um, yeah, you really don't. <laughs> and want so to we we've been trying to stay away from that because sometimes okay. there are problems when they well, introduce. Well, you're going to throw all the money, mm -hmm. like you said, at the at the version that has the most customers. And currently so we're you don't there. really yeah. want to yeah. be the person that's on the newest version because they're going to be trying to Absolutely, yeah, so that's a concern as well. So I think that's why Gail decided, okay, 10.5 is where we're at for now, and then we'll definitely need okay. to dedicate more resources when we want to go next year to 11 something, <laughs> whichever that might be. So. Good, thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions? No. Thanks. Nope. Thank you very much. That was a good Thanks, update. Sharon. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, next on our agenda is a review of the town manager's goals uh, for 2015. In our package tonight was a summary that Bob had provided in terms of current state. Same one? Yeah. There's a two page summary that goes the other direction from most of the pages. Um, I don't know if you guys got them in the audience that were, you know, those yep. things. Um, yeah, there's a couple of anyways. I'll, I'll also have them behind me. I, it seemed like it was better to put everything in one location on one document instead of having a couple of sets. So all it, it is behind me is organized by the um, Reading 2020 groups and then there's some goals at the end that didn't fit into a Reading 2020 group. And I thought it'd be helpful to go through each group and the uh, status, if you will, of some of the goals within there. Uh, and I'm, I'm reasonably familiar with what John Halsey has been uh, helping with, so I can chime in on, on some of that as well. For community partners, the first one, that's Dan, Kevin, Gene, and myself. Uh, this is an example of us working very independently. I don't think any of us have met as a group before. <laughs> We're not like the high school kids. Um, that, that first one there, Explore Creative Public-Private Ventures, I'm, I'm not sure how that concludes because it's infinite. Um, I think it's lagged somewhat, but I, I also know that both collectively and individually we've, we've done something every couple weeks, some kind of outreach. But it's a, it's, it's a difficult thing to measure. So the thing I've described to you in general terms about the uh, EDC flowers is, you know, there's, there's one strong and one other option to have a private organization take it over. It's taken a lot of behind the scenes work and it's a lot of other complex issues rolled into it. Um, but there's no tangible deliverable, if you will, yet. You know, it's conversation. Right. But when you're measuring this, what you can do is say we have implemented a, you know, Contacted a partnership. These with, you know, we we we've, yeah. we've we've had these discussions. So we discussed with ten organizations. We've reached conclusion with three. You know, there there is some information like that that doesn't doesn't. Okay. obviously recognize the amount of work that was done but at least has something down there because it's not that nothing's been done right right so, and yeah. um, to some of the board's recent conversation um, you know I, I thought we should also uh, discuss our mildy in the schools as partners mm -hmm. in some way shape or form I agree mm -hmm. absolutely um, and I, I sent the board just a quick email within the last 10 days you know an example and it also falls into regionalization um, you know this specifically is public-private ventures, but there's public-public ventures, mm -hmm. working with other towns in an informal arrangement. You know, it's also very helpful. It it's achieves the same goal. It serves the same purpose. Bob, to that end, to the extent you have something like this, which is going to be ongoing, no natural end, yeah, and who knows where it leads. Marcy's point on, I think, showing this as um, by quarter, either outcomes or activity, this is one case where I wouldn't mind an activity chart. It doesn't tell you much about how to value it, but it shows that work went on. Think of it as a, a, a line that throughout the year, or maybe just Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, yeah. and you could say, mm -hmm. um, here's five meetings we had with these five stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Here's one outcome that came out of that. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can value that in dollars. Maybe you can value that in time avoided. Maybe you can't value it mm -hmm. at all. But it, it's the one case where I think I would accept activity as an outcome, as a report of activity mm -hmm. as opposed to dollars okay. and cents. 
Chris. Well, and because I mean, you could have you could have many discussions that lead to nothing. But yep. you you've yep. been actually working on this particular goal, can't, and, can't and let's recognize that. Yeah, and the, and the board will also well understand some of the discussions. I would say, you know, party A, B, or C. Sure. Because they're not going right, to want Right, because they don't want their names out. Sure. That's less important than yeah. work is going on. It's yeah. that. Okay. It's that there's progress being made, right? Yep. Um, and just to point out the format of this document, also the priority. It was basically three groups. Um, most of them came in as low, meaning sometime this year or the next year. Um, the first two in this one were medium. The uh, future regionalization efforts, we haven't necessarily accomplished uh, future regionalization efforts, but we've pretty much looked stem to stern. And, and Jimmy, I think animal control is the only thing left that we've kicked the tires on. And there seems to be, I don't know, three or four communities to our north and west that are pretty interested, quite interested. Uh, and I think we are too. So you think it's fair to say in the next year and a half that may happen? Uh, if it's going to happen. Next, next year and a half it will be, I think, decided. It, yeah. It, it, it'll, it'll come to uh, conclusion. Yeah, One okay. Way, yeah, how it plays out. I, I, think, I think it's a pretty strong likelihood that, uh, that that can go that way. And this is a good thing to regionalize because when you think of it, um, you know, when, when dogs decide to wander away, they don't necessarily do it in the few hours that your animal control officer is working. <laughs> So, um, you know, it'd be helpful to be 24-7 <coughs> on this with other communities, basically, to have on-call uh, facilities. Regionalization efforts currently, we, we have looked at a number of them, as, as the board is, is aware, and, and Sean Halsey has, has helped out quite a bit in this. Um, we have abandoned the idea of regionalizing veterans and recreation. We spent a lot of time on both. Uh, neither one of them was just going to work out. In one case, um, we were very well. In both cases, we were very willing, and in both cases, other partners were not. Is is the bottom line? And I I really don't know in either case that we would have been better off regionalizing versus the other path we'll take. And to regionalize just for its own name is is not usually mm -hmm. something I'm interested in. And as you know, we've cut back on the scope of the health uh, regionalization. Uh, which reminds me, I, I do want to take another run at the assessors. I, I have, we postponed uh, formalizing that for more than a year because we thought the state was going to change some regs. They have not done that with a new governor. I'm not sure that's going to happen. So I'll, I'll sit down and chat with Wakefield and, and see what they want to do. I, I will tell you, it's, it's gone very well. We're both very happy. Bob, to that end, um, is it possible that regional, regionalization efforts that don't appear to bear fruit now or which have been discontinued might be reconsidered going forward either. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, and there's things that we haven't thought of yet that may well come to pass as being something that's interesting. Uh, you, you know, some of the things we do very much has a town border aspect to it, but a lot of it does not. One of the areas that was thought for regionalization early on was um, human health services. You know, share a senior center with someone else. You know, on paper maybe that works out a certain degree, but in practice not so much. You know, people identify with their community very strongly. And if you are offering some kind of a function or event, that's one thing. Right. But to offer, you know, routine, you know, lunch, you know, go to Melrose every day for lunch, that's not what people wanted to. So we have found that regionalization does have its limitations. Um, the next one is services and performance measurement. That's, that's a little bit of a bigger bite. And as you can see, um, there's been some pretty good progress on the highest priorities. Um, the ARCASA model is just fine, thank you. <laughs> um, it's, it's really too bad John Halsey could not attend last week, but we met jointly with um, a large group from Wilmington and North Reading that are interested in getting a little deeper into this uh, themselves. And I made it very clear at the beginning we were not going to regionalize with them because this is one of those things that does. The problem doesn't know borders, but the solutions are very much Localized. a teamwork within a within a, a community. And um, I really have gotten very little feedback. I was supposed to have breakfast with uh, those communities this morning. They put it off a few days because of the snow. Is their interest more duplicating what we have than regionalizing? I think what their we have? interest. Erica, as as Jim would attest, gave a tremendous presentation, a very thoughtful overview. Um, John and Jim, especially, were there to give more background as to how it was formed uh, with Pat and Peter. And Jim's been there throughout. And um, the point was really to show the other two communities, in case they had any doubts, that this is a village effort. You know, this is a big deal. You don't solve it by adding an FTE to your budget and saying you're done. 
this is something that needs strong buy-in from law enforcement, from town management, and from school department, and then many portions thereof. So uh, I think the reason that I've heard so little is because they left with their mouths hanging open. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so, too. Uh, honestly, uh, Erica gave such a tremendously thorough presentation. She didn't leave hardly any room for questions. And, and the amount and the volume of work and detail that has gone into this for the last several years was staggering. Uh, and we all learned. You know, there's a lot of mistakes made, or at least some made along the way, and we learned from them. And that's to their benefit that now they know. But it's a big deal. If either of these, these communities have efforts now, but if they want to go to the next level of our CAFSA like model, it's, um, you know, it costs a certain amount of money. It does. That's not the cost. The cost is the time and the energy. And you have to be all in. You can't have, you know, two out of three wheels work and then the third one doesn't agree. So Bob, to the extent you have 100% in some of these, what's your intention of carrying them forward? Uh, done. Okay. In most cases. Um, public uh, health division, you know, that's... Question? Yeah. I, yeah, go ahead. General, uh, regarding the admin services director, uh, would you see that person mentioned here? Does that mean they're going to completely take this over and then we'll cross the line off, or are they going to join the join. group? Join. Join. Okay. Yeah. So there'll still be a collaborative thing yeah. with the remaining... Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Um, the public health division, the review is not complete, I suppose, but we have uh, laid out a two with, I guess it's a three-year plan. <coughs> Uh, we were supposed to meet on Monday night last night, but we weren't able to do that, so we'll, we'll meet at some point in the near future. Um, John Halsey has been very helpful, as, as has Jean. We've met uh, quite a bit, uh, first with the chair, not to violate the open meeting laws because they had three members, so we couldn't meet with any two, and then we've met with the board a couple times. Um, there's a lot of issues to hash through. There's a lot of misunderstandings that the board had. Um, I think the, the simplest way to describe it is Reading does things very differently than Melrose in this area, and the Melrose model was trying to be given to Reading. I don't think it was working too well. And plus, I don't know that it was possible to regionalize health into three communities. Um, two was okay, you know, three was just too hard. So the budget that is put forth has made some staffing changes, as, as I described to you a couple weeks ago and laid out a plan for even more staffing in the future, um, you know, should funds become available. And I would say, generally speaking, um, the Board of Health is on board with this. I'm sure we don't agree perfectly on every single thing, but um, there's a fair amount of harmony, whereas a few months ago there was disharmony. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else on that, Gene? Um, emergency management planning, as you can tell from the last three Mondays, <laughs> That's been working okay. Mm -hmm. you know, Greg really does a nice job, as do uh, all the others involved. Um, one of the things that, um, that we do a really good job of after the fact is paperwork. And we're hoping from the first storm that Mike has put together his usual spreadsheets and, and FEMA says, once again, you're doing an excellent job. Here's all the money. Um, you know, we, we have pretty good luck in that, in that area. But uh, my understanding is they keep changing the rules and the requirements and the game they play. So it's, it's difficult to always keep up with it. But I would, I would think that there is some reimbursement coming either this fiscal year or next for some of the last three weeks. For major events like the ones we're going through now, is there a uh, lessons learned, mistakes made, things to avoid kind of behavior going <laughs> At the end Don't of live in the Northeast. <laughs> <laughs> but, but seriously, is there kind of an, a, a, a roll up after the event to kind of. You know, we usually do a really good job of meeting after an event, but there hasn't been an after yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we didn't even meet this weekend. Yeah. You know, we were all taking care of our own roofs and yards and all that. And, you know, we communicated mostly electronically on Sunday, whereas normally we try to meet. And it was okay. like, let's do the same thing we did the last two times. <laughs> so. You know, there's a little bit of fatigue in there probably, but you know, Greg is really good about sitting down with everyone, usually the next day, right away, and saying what went well, what didn't go well, what did we learn. Um, has there been anything that you guys have seen that has changed over the last three weeks? Um, I, would, I would say just for my eyes, and I, I know the situation was much different this time, this storm being so slower, the yeah. cleanup was better because it was slower. It's not because the guys did anything differently, they just had more time. 
whereas those blizzards dump so much snow so quickly. Haven Street was a wreck for one day. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever melting agent you're using on the road seems to be very effective at lower temperatures, and I think that's that's a big success. That's keeping the roads clear at uh, lower temperatures. Yeah. Using the material, we've got to really watch it. And look at the forecast coming up. You got to really. So a lot of times with the side streets, we'll use the mix, salt sand mix. Takes longer to work. You don't see black as quickly, but it still does something to help the help the cars. And one of the issues I, I know the schools have you know, suffered this year a lot of days off. That's one of the penalties of neighborhood schools with no busing. Yeah. You know, if we were busing kids to schools, all you need is a parking lot. Mm -hmm. all, off you go. Um, for the inventory of services, you know, Gene has said that the MSPC will be done that in March. Um, I think I sent the board over the weekend a couple more grants that we were awarded mm -hmm. from the MAPC, <coughs> which was certainly good news. Yeah. Um, anything else on that one, Gene? Is that the thing that, well, go ahead. So this is just a way to um, get down on paper the services that we provide. We're going to be um, talking a little bit more about this um, at the department heads meeting on Thursday. Yeah. We have a template that we're going to be distributing to the department heads to get their help building the inventory. <coughs> and um, that will be our starting point of, you know, what is it that we provide for services. And um, our goal is to come back to the Board of Selectmen with sort of a rough outline of what that looks like. Um, we'd like to do that in March. And mm -hmm. then the next milestone will be to have a public forum. We're hoping to do that in April to hear from the public on what the priorities are for services and um, maybe start to have some dialogue about alternatives to the way we currently provide services. So if you remember, I believe it was 2010, there was some financial forums held. And it was more brainstorming, informal, you know, disorganized, if you will. And the community wanted everything on the list. Um, it's always hard to find someone who says, well, I don't want that thing even though I use it. But I think this will be another interesting process, a little more formal for the community to go through. They want everything on the list they used. Yeah. They're perfectly yeah. happy to cut those things that those other people use. <laughs> and it'll be really interesting to see what kind of a turnout we can elicit. I'm going to have the robotics guys advertise it for I us. I think that's a great idea. Maybe bring a robot there. Maybe they can bring a robot. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is the kind of thing that I can easily see four people from the community showing up, and then when there's consequences, there's 400 that said they wish they had come. <laughs> So we'll have to be I'm careful. I'm familiar with, this with one. that actually. Yes. Thing. I, well, the charter. Very familiar with that. The, the charter committee's public hearing had two people one of the nights, and they were both in the media. So. <laughs> to this end, is there a way to include a measure of the benefit that the service is addressing to to the extent that you've got that? That's the next one right below it on the list, uh, and that was meant to the follow to the first thing. Measure. I took that as measuring the outcome, not necessarily the the audience that it would apply. I'm talking um, about the actual audience. Mm, okay. Does two percent of the ways. population benefit from it? Does five percent? That's interesting. Yeah. Then you get into it that so it's way. What services, and then how many people are taking advantage of those services, or how many yeah, people benefit from those services? Particularly yeah. if you have a demographic based benefit, right. just to pick on mm -hmm. it. Um, you might have a hundred percent enrollment penetration, but it's two percent of the population. Right. One thing I had, uh, we haven't had a department head meeting, I said to the board last time we <coughs> met, was what is level service? If five people ask for something and you serve all five, and then next year ten people ask, is level service all ten or just five? I think the town's past definition has been depends. five. I think it depends. I think it depends, right? The, it depends what that service is. It, it does, but the, but the real <coughs> answer from a community standpoint is if you're serving everyone who has asked for it and would use it, you continue to do that even if the demand grows. So particularly going back to that, um, you know, demographic study of elder services, um, you know, if it's going to be a population that increases by three quarters, 
and we're going to provide whatever surface it is to whoever wants it. That's a big change. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think that's a good point, John. I was thinking more along the lines of measuring what the services did, what they what they provided, as opposed to how many people use them or how many people could use them. Yeah, this might be a, an unpopular. But you could do the same. Yeah, I could imagine if you had a one percent. Yeah. Service. You might say it's one percent. You got to go. Yeah. You got to find an alternate way to get that done. Yeah, you're right. That will be unpopular. <laughs> but it's it's, it's you got to gather the facts. Well, it yeah. probably depends on on what service it of is course, and of whether course that's it does. truly yeah. a of you know is it, it a government service or is that something yeah, that truly could does. come from someplace else, right? So, yeah. yeah. An example of the opposite side of that is the um, town forest. Um, compost drop-off where yeah. it benefits a segment and you'd argue that the costing could be adjusted to benefit to, to reflect the benefit mm -hmm. uh, it's not quite the same thing as discontinuing it it's actually encouraging it but funding it a different way and uh, the last one and I, I didn't get a chance to talk to all of you um, Ruth has got a trustees meeting rescheduled from last night. Uh, otherwise, she she said she'd come whenever she could, but she isn't here yet. Um, but as I believe most of you know, the trustees uh, have agreed to do a master plan, um, and they want to fund it this spring and complete it by next fall. So by let's just say by December, they hope to move into the new facility. We're saying uh, publicly June of next year, June of 2016, May June. Um, so ideally, they'd like to have a, a master plan done, let's just say in the winter, to give them some time uh, to adjust as, as they may need to. Um, I think that's, you know, that's a really good, good progress in that area. Um, the next one is communication. And uh, this is where our, our new administrative services director will have the most influence, certainly. Um, I'm going to do a couple of these out of order and then lump kind of the rest together. The West Street project is, is finite. Mm -hmm. um, it's, the town has done what it needs to do up to date pretty well. Um, I can't remember. I don't think I told you last time. I'm not sure it had happened yet, but that we have shut down the contractor. It's pretty obvious because of weather. Until so further notice. Week of clear. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Sharon mentioned the current billing and bill printing and mailing policy mm -hmm. there was only one vendor that did that and they went out of business <laughs> so I think our options would be limited um, unless those some one of those kids you know will start up a business quickly <laughs> there's no competition I've just always imagined as a consumer it'd be awfully nice to get one bill from the town of Reading however often you need to get it that had all the different bills you need to pay but that may never happen I don't know um, it does happen in very small cities and towns in the Midwest, I'm told. I think they're where they have somebody I think who's they're printing them, so <laughs> who's typing them out. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Handwritten. <laughs> um, the other three that I skipped have something to do with each other. Um, you, you know, the board has talked a lot with with me about communication with volunteer boards. Um, I think the first step was to improve the staffing. So with full-time staff for some of these boards, I think that's a great first step, as is proposed in next year's budget. I think uh, the two uh, below there in green, 11 and 22, you know, what is the role of volunteer boards in community development, and how can we get feedback from the community on both the volunteer boards and, you know, and the staff and the general direction? I think that last one is going to have to be fine-tuned as to what kind of community feedback you really want, but you hit on some of it a little while ago, John, in terms of what services you know, do you use. I don't want to survey people to death, but I have to say the, f the couple handful of surveys we've done in the past have been extremely helpful when there's good participation. Um, we almost always get 100 people to do it. That conservation one, I think, had 400. Um, you know, it was very helpful. Uh, on to the fourth one, which is the most complex one because it's got lots of different parts. And I know this is an area that John Halsey has been pretty, pretty in, involved with. The industrial zoning properties, industrial zone is the area behind the light department. Um, Gene, catch me up to date as I speak if I'm not up to date, but RMLD's plan was to uh, master plan their facilities 
and they had to rearrange their plans as they lost some staff. Mm -hmm. So they're very far behind where I thought they'd be, and I know where they wanted to be on that. Um, have you talked to Colleen lately at all about that? And, and they're the linchpin of, of that, plus the next issue, uh, DPW facilities. I did get a plan, I'm going to say two or three weeks ago from George. Um, I can't remember exact numbers, but I didn't like the 18 million, so they came back with a, a 19 and a 17 or something. So two options. Yeah, okay. <laughs> two options that were roughly in the same ballpark. Um, as, as the board is aware, and if Bill's watching at home, he can come down and correct me tomorrow. The uh, cemetery trustees have voted an article on the town meeting to fund a cemetery garage at $2 million. To me, that's still part of the discussion with the public works facilities, whether it does or doesn't belong there. I, I think it does, but I'm, I'm open-minded on that. Um, I think the whole thing is turned over to a building committee, and I think mm -hmm. even though the AG has not approved that yet, I'd like you to uh, probably in your late February, early March meeting start advertising and deciding what you want for criteria for a building committee and at least one of those meetings should be a joint meeting with the school committee mm -hmm. I think their timing is a little bit better in March just because of school vacation Bob I would assume something like that where it's not execution we haven't decided to spend 16 or 19 right. or 22 um, I would I would have thought the building committee would have been at, on the execution side not on the strategy side that's not the way the bylaw committee envisioned it for the reason that they don't want a lot of momentum built up on things that aren't agreeable to the building committee, quote unquote, as the gating. <coughs> I could see that. Yeah. I think that stemmed from that. Um, if you've got a lot of different things that you know are going to be coming down the pipe, but you, you want to be able to have one group that has some understanding of the fact that there's maybe something in the schools and something with public works and something with a library and can can see how they they all fit together I get that but it all comes down to what is what it is mm. right when when is it ripe enough to hand over to the yeah and ha having talked to some of the uh, interested groups um, they're not interested in turning it over too early they haven't or really fleshed all. out the <laughs> or, or maybe at all <laughs> <laughs> they just haven't fleshed out the idea and, and it is a fine line yeah. but there's no reason that you can't form it and understand because it's going to take a while to advertise and, and, and get uh, membership certainly and I honestly I think the uh, the membership you you end up staffing it with are going to in large measure answer all those policy questions they will decide um, the bylaw that was written gives them great authority if you follow it right to the I know, letter I know yeah. um, maybe too much we'll see it really depends on how it's staffed and you know what kind of people you have there uh, if it's not working properly in the future, we'll adjust it. You know, that's that's not hard. The thing that they won't do very easily is is run amok and just spend money because they can't. All I can do is plan and recommend. Town meeting has to spend the money. Um, so as long as there's good transparency and good reporting back from them to everyone, schools in town, uh, especially, I think it'll be fine. But to find sort of the neutral parties that have the big picture that'll be the trick and have the time to put into it you could it's easily be a time sink. you could easily see uh two projects going on and forget the library project we're leaving that the way it is and that's a big time sink on its own i can tell you uh, if you have two projects going on at once it's going to be a real big commitment for you know people that are remote volunteers we'll see recreation facilities i won't say as much because john halsey is leading that charge um, and that's going to be an area where I'm sure the rec committee and John Fudo and John Holsey are not going to want to turn anything to a building committee until they really have to. <laughs> and, you know, and, I, and I'm okay with that. There's a lot of ideas. We've gone on some site visits. Um, there's a lot of very exciting revenue opportunities out there. Um, but beyond that, it's, it's really in the talking and the planning stage as far as I know. John can give us a better update when he's back. Uh, community planning, the next one. I don't know, Jim, do you remember any high priorities for PTTF that are unaddressed? I guess the downtown parking one is still out there because we haven't 
got any sense of what the demand is because we don't have all the tenants in yet. Well, yeah, and I think part of part of the idea with that was to wait until <coughs> um, Charles Street block was, yeah. was occupied and see what the impacts are, if, if, if there are impacts to be addressed. There was, there was a thought before it was occupied that, you know, um, the end was coming when that opened and that there would right. be no room for any cars downtown anymore. But as we found, you know, many of the businesses are running and they're flourishing and, uh, you know, uh, everything's pretty much status quo. People are finding places to park and they're using the businesses. So, so, uh, so do we have on the list to come up with a new name for PTTTF, <laughs> which is really completely unwieldy? <laughs> we do. We do, but we haven't any suggestions yet. EFFFT. We have a meeting this Thursday. <laughs> No, is it next, next week? Uh, next, next, uh, uh, next Wednesday. So you, you're on vacation. Right, yeah. I, won't do that. I guess next week. Well, we'll figure it out. Um, affordable housing, I don't know. That's one of those, you know, like the first one we talked about. It's never going to be done, I suppose. But, but that's probably like the other one where um, if Some they're th th listing what those activities are that are going on towards that 10% housing is probably yeah, a good that's, thing. Yeah, that's, there you have it. Because there's activity, yeah. I know you've, you've discussed different things that have been sort of <coughs> in play or discussed and, yeah. You think it's, you know, remaining confidential about the party is one thing, but is there much you could really say about the locations even? That just gives it away. You know, we've had a handful of meetings with some really interested people that are interested in addressing the shortfall. I don't think you need to talk about but, the location. It's okay. really more of a matter of, you know, you know, three meetings around one location or, okay. you know, something like that, really, that just gives you some sense that there's progress being made, right? Could you talk about the upside opportunity in terms of what it might yield without specificity yeah. to who and where? Yeah, maybe. probably. Number of units. If you add everything together, like we're certainly in the hundreds of units. E easily. Um, the housing plan that we put together a couple of years ago has a little bit of a roadmap for um, how we thought we might be able to get there. A couple of projects have um, fallen off of the list and a couple of new ones have gone on. So um, one way might be to take that template <coughs> from the housing plan and mm. just update it um, looking forward. Yeah, scratch out the ones that didn't pan out, add the ones that did, and some other important milestones like, you know, visibility to another couple hundred units or... Mystery Project A, yeah. B, C, <laughs> you know, Project until X. they're ready to be named. My favorite was the 500 units on stilts in conservation land. <laughs> <laughs> hmm, I see some roadblocks ahead for that. <laughs> oh, maybe one or two. <laughs> Mosquitoes. I don't yeah, think right. that's what I was talking mm -hmm. about. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, the next two, I, I, I guess we're effectively done. We've implemented you know the sixth best program and complete streets uh, the real trick there is funding the state is still a little disorganized on that and they financially are not much shape to improve on that but as soon as they're ready we'll be right at their doorstep and likewise the bike and and ped plan i guess the south main street diet is still in the drawing board it's still going to be discussed um, it really fits to pretty pretty closely together with complete streets you could really merge those two at this point um, in terms of policy, that's certainly where a lot of effort and time has been spent. Mm -hmm. um, zoning bylaw, I'd really like to put 100 there, but it can't <laughs> since it's not done. And 95 is probably an exaggeration, but it we feels like I was going to say 90. It feels 90, like it's like 400. Seems a little, a little, a little higher. Right. <laughs> Only the details are left. Yeah. Um, is the thought now that it'll be finished in November or just might be finished in November? I guess you don't know yet. Yeah, we've asked for feedback from the boards. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I think yesterday was the deadline. So maybe I think it, Laura, got Laura it got postponed, it got postponed yeah. to next week or whenever the next Laura week. sent it out again over the week. It was postponed to March. March 2nd. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's March 2nd. Yeah. yeah, it might be right, yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of what we wanted to hear about, what collectively the goals were or how we move forward. But CPDC has an interest in... Um, taking a couple of manageable bites to the November town meeting, whatever that might end up being. And what's left is reasonably divisible. There's, yeah. there's not a lot that has to go together. You could do signed bylaws all by itself. Okay. Uh, permanent building committee, I mean, 
other than form one, you've done everything else. The AG has to just approve it. Uh, that was an interesting process with the bylaw committee. There was a lot of twists and turns along the way. It, and I think it turned out pretty well, though. Uh, review other town bylaws. I don't even remember what I was thinking when I added that on. What so other, what other town I, bylaws I don't know. are there? If I you don't did know. zoning. <laughs> I guess I guess the rest of them. There are general bylaws. General you bylaws. know, the general bylaws were recodified a few years ago. Yeah. yeah. Laura and Peter were part of that. The selectmen were part was of that. Strictly the renumbering, rewording. Well, that's what I thought. Not so much. Oh, really? Yeah, there's been edits made. Oh. We've we've learned through town council that some things have changed. <laughs> And we can't always, one of the questions that came up at the last town meeting, we can't really duplicate and understand why a change was made. Mm -hmm. One of the discussions that came through in the um, November town meeting, uh, the answer is we can track the change. We know when it happened. There is no institutional memory as to why. It's, it's the um, mm. uh, gun by law thing. Oh. You know, why did we, I don't it's even remember, Jim, did we add or subtract a couple words? Yeah. that when and I don't know why that language was added and I, I don't have any knowledge of that but, uh, and I haven't asked Pete um, but what it does is it, it, it nar more narrowly defines uh, what parts of chapter 131 the hunting um, statute can be used we only hunting and sport there are other segments to that um, chapter you know so so whoever put it in there or however it got put in it it was it more narrowed the scope of 131 in that particular context, not it didn't expand it. Right. Which I think that, I think it was a misunderstanding that that somehow mm -hmm. expanded mm -hmm. the use of 131. Right. I think that now. eliminates things like trapping and stuff like that. Exactly. Putting Fishing, that language in trapping, there. Trapping, yeah. all kinds of things, and it <clears throat> very particularly says only hunting and sport. Right. But as opposed to the zoning process you went through and, and the charter process to a, to a far lesser degree. Um, in addition to lack of institutional memory, there's a lot of, not a lot of notes. There's not a lot of trails left behind as to why did we do this. Whereas you guys, practically every comma and period you change, you know, <laughs> yeah. there's a footnote somewhere. So, which was good. You know, it's good to have that. Community Preservation Act, uh, the answer is no. You know, if we're going to ask the community for money, it's not going to be for that. I'm happy to see that. <laughs> That's a very specifically focused. Yeah. Is. Well, it's gotten a little broader Funny lately, but it still is certainly focused. Um, technology master planning, uh, our technology director and Kevin and operations specialist Gail have worked on that. They just had a phone call last week. Um, it's difficult to talk to someone in Florida right now, though, I have to say. <laughs> um, the new hire will finish this off, if you will. Uh, this is another thing that will never really be done, but every five years I think it's a really good idea to do this. And just to shock Sharon, I can tell you right now that Munis's shelf life is probably five years from now. When um, Microsoft bought them eight years ago, nine years ago, um, I talked to someone in Texas. I said, we're thinking about buying this. He says, I promise you for 10 years you're all set. And after that, Microsoft is going to put out their own thing. Yep, mm -hmm. they always do. And, you know, they did that down in Florida as a test case. Uh, Florida made all the municipalities shift over to this thing. It didn't go well at all. So hopefully that delayed it another five years. But, you know, that's what's going to happen. Thank, you know, as soon thank as you God don't they didn't good buy reason quicken. not to be upgrading well, to that you, advanced you you lose, SQL stuff yeah, that everybody right. else isn't on, right? You know, you go off the <laughs> DIY program and yeah. you're subject to someone else's market cycles. Yep. Yep. So it's a good product. Its support has never been quite as good as it should be, in my opinion. Um, but They never are, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, it, it's certainly very complete. <laughs> When I think of back to how we used to do things, it's really kind of horrifying that, you know, we didn't run our ship aground, mm -hmm. having no idea how much money was spent or how much money was left. Oh, Jimmy's laughing because he, he knows. <laughs> and, the, and, and, the, and the old, well, put it over there. There's still money left in that account. <laughs> Let's spend it out of there. So we've come a long way. Yeah. <laughs> Just an editorial, I think Microsoft's made a t tactical or strategic decision to focus on the glitz and walk away from their business customers just looking at their last release of Windows I, I haven't seen it That's Windows 8 okay yeah, and 8 one. It. yeah it's a disaster it's gonna be replaced by 10 it was so bad they had to skip a number <laughs> <laughs> no. No. 
That's the end of the Reading 2020s. We'll circle back and have a short discussion, but let me just finish off some other goals below there. Um, and generally, most of these were low priority. The uh, FY16 budget will finish off the first two goals, more or less. Selectman's policies, we mentioned it once. Um, we did organize it. I should say we, I mean Paula. <laughs> did a really nice job organizing them, as well as the town manager policies. Um, should anyone choose to look at those, you know, they're now available. For the town manager mm -hmm. policies, we are. Um, Judy Perkins, our HR director, has set up an employee committee to review some of the policies, personnel policies in particular. I would hope to come back to a, a board sometime this summer with suggested changes. It's, it's your call on them. And, you know, beyond that, I'll leave it up to the employees to, uh, to look at it. The charter's done. Uh, we're still trying, trying to avoid sending out 9,000 copies, but I think we're going to have to mail out 9,000 copies to satisfy the uh, letter of the state law. Mm -hmm. So um, can't send out a link, can't send out a summary, have to send out the whole charter. And the real trick will be. And there's no way to get a waiver on that at all. No. Mm -hmm. Well, if, can I say this? If yeah, we're, we're going to spend that kind of money on gender specificity, I want to know what that number is. <laughs> before, we, before we, no, I'm serious. Before we undertake that effort, I think we should report it back to town meeting. Well, it's going to cost you, I don't know, figure a buck each to mail it. It's pretty yeah. well, maybe even more. And we have to do it again next year to make all these gender well, neutral changes. That's, that's, a that's what I'm talking yeah, about. Next year. That, that's, <laughs> that is definitely food for thought in the future. Absolutely. And the reason you can't download just a link or email and a link is why? It's not legally. It's not compliant? It's, it's not, you're not. State law. No. Yeah, we've, I've talked a lot to Ray about this. and yeah, they're lagging. <laughs> We're even constrained as to how we can communicate it right. to some degree because you can't influence. So I wrote up a sample. I think only Laura and Ray were copied. Um, I said, you know, how about this sentence? And he struck a couple words and put it in his own. He said, you were trying to influence the voters, weren't you? I was like, no, I really wasn't. But well, once I saw his point, yeah, I kind of was. I was, thought I was stating facts, but... No, I was really giving. Can you get around that by doing like the state ballot question? You have a pro and a con side, and there's a no. no? The town is not allowed to do either. Oh. We have to drive the truck right down the middle of the road, mm. and state in in factual language and honestly in a way that's going to be hard to understand. I would like to use simple language and explain it. So what I what I am hoping for at the end of the day is to have information on the website to help anyone who's interested, ah. which will be a very low percent. Yeah. But at least say, you know, there's a charter, whatever it was, guide we had, and there's some background written up. If you're really interested, go read that stuff. How would you possibly quantify the con side in, in the same spirit of being neutral? You know, Ray took a stab, which I thought was a good idea, at summarizing what the changes were. And, you know, he's probably got the right perspective of any of us um, as an outsider looking in. He said these are the important things. There weren't very many. Board of Assessors changed from appointed right. to elected. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember the other ones, but uh, town manager appointing the appraiser was another one. There weren't very many. There were the really ombudsman. changes. The yeah, not being, he didn't even. No, that wasn't even something that he. Nope. Mm. No, and, you know the 28 to 35 day. I don't remember if that was one of his fines, but they're really very minor things. But I'm really a little uncomfortable mentioning like three things or five things without also saying, look, there's a lot more information available if you're really interested. So I don't want people to say, well, you didn't tell me about this. Yep. You're cherry picking. So uh, we're presuming the AG will approve in time for it to go on the ballot? Mm -hmm. um, I, I met, uh, because of the library thing on Friday, I, all three of our reps were there, and I asked them what the time frame oh, okay. was okay. on the legislative piece, and they hoped February, hmm. but kind of one of those. Mm -hmm. So we're going to send out I have a question to Ray, so I'm not sure he's going to agree with what I'm going to say, but my intention is to send out the whole charter as is, as is proposed, mm -hmm. um, with a letter explaining which sections the town by itself does not have the authority to change. Now, we're going to have to send it out in a way that's almost for sure going to be before we know when the legislature has approved it. So we're going to have to word it carefully. Mm -hmm. If the legislature approves it in time, and I'm not exactly sure what that means other than clearly by April, the vote of the town of the town will pass the entire thing. Um, if the legislature sends it back slower, and mm -hmm. ask us to put it to a vote, 
we may have to decide whether to have two different years of votes or just skip the first year. But we'll have already sent out the charter, so that's going to be tough. That's something we talked about on Friday. Mm -hmm. They have no sense of what the odds are of whether they will ask us to vote on it or not. And I said, look, can you, can you just get the thing passed and ask us to vote, like, in the next two weeks? Because that would be fine. We don't mind yeah. doing the vote. We just right. need to know fast. <clears throat> yeah. So it's, it's a real you know, catch-as-catch-can problem, like you were with zoning. What happens if this section passes and this one doesn't? You know, how do we leave the document? So uh, I don't want to cause confusion. Again, most people are going to throw the thing away. I, I right. probably would. Mm -hmm. But you can't have a lot of complicated explanation about yeah. what the thing is. Here's the new charter. By the way, you don't have the authority by yourself to do all of it. The legislature's involved. End of story on these sections. Mm. But you have to follow state law, and you have to have said whatever it is you know, that the law dictates. <coughs> Can the attorney general's approval come after we close the warrant, but before the vote is taken? How, how does that play in with these other variables? I, I think it's independent. I okay. don't think it. I think the the act of the legislature is all by themselves. Yep. They will do whatever they do. I believe the House and the Senate will take it up one right after the other. It's, I believe it's going to start in the House. Uh, Brad has taken the lead on it. I'm talking about the other level of review by the AG. Um, that just to approve what we passed. That shouldn't be a factor. That'll okay. happen before town meeting. Um, I'm trying to think. They've finished September. Before the they election. Finished November. Before the I'm election. I'm sorry. Before the election. Okay. Yeah. Um, they have not finished January yet, so. Okay. Yeah. And we didn't ask for any special haste in any of the January ones, um, other than the West Side or uh, yeah, Summer Island. Yeah. I don't expect that to take much longer, okay. though. Uh, library building project, you know, it's, it's now in the scary part. It's being, it's being built or just about. You know, the planning is, is almost done. Um, you know, make no mistake about it, it's a lot of work. You know, obviously, we're not out there building the thing, but um, you know, Joe Huggins especially, uh, and, and Ruth is now going to weekly construction meetings. Uh, it's, a, it's, a big, it's a big time use, and it's going to be that way for 16, 18 months. Bob, in the Thursday notes, I think, maybe I'm misremembering the package, there was discussion about the last library building committee meeting. Maybe it was from David Hutchinson that referenced um, contingency funds and use of them as they got into it, whether those funds became okay. available. Yeah, we had a library building committee meeting, I guess it was last Thursday night, and, and Karen Herrick is the FinCom liaison, and I think I straightened out. They hadn't met since October. I, so I saw that. Gap. October 25. Yeah. Wow. And there was really there was no reason for them to meet other than that was kind of you know, a long time. Um, I, I think, I'll speak for her in what she said that night, that she's kind of on board and satisfied now. What we have is we have an internal Munis accounting system for the project, which is obviously keeping track of everything. And we have a project manager doing it a slightly different way. And so what we've asked him to do is talk to her and put it together so that we can all be using the same language and the same figures. So I'll just give you an example that I, I found over the weekend. The uh, architect has an invoice that he shows of spending 819000 to date on the project. We show 816000 There's no reason they should be different. There's no such thing as a two or $3,000 bill that's different. So I don't know. You know, there's all these little minutiae things. But the point is we want to have a real simple, transparent document to give to everyone, starting with the library building committee, you know, as short a summary as is reasonable, you know, a couple pages. Um, it's way too early to say anything other than the project is, is very much on track, and um, all the ad ad alts were added in because the bid was the bids were so low, the winning bid was so low mm. that the whole list of other things, if we had extra money to do, was added. Mm. So you know, it's 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 in as good a financial shape as it could be. Now, having said that, they haven't really found anything yet, so we'll see. Um, for long-term liability planning, I, I think we're effectively done on that also. Our OPEB funding mechanism is seemingly well accepted, even if FinCom wouldn't um, call it a policy. You know, the pension funding is, is moving along at 4.5% a year, which is a little on the high side, but it's what the uh, pension board wants. And the health insurance RFP, you, you heard about it, was, it was very scary. The, uh, you know, the cover bids were horrific. 
but it is what it is. We did the best we could, and um, we're we're getting a good deal for where we are. You know, to think of an 8.2 percent increase as being really good news is really hard to say, but that's that's where we are. Um, they had said that by the third week of February they'd be in a position possibly to quote a second year. So I'll ask them. Maybe I'll just wait till the first week of March. For FinCom's two-year budgeting, I think that'll be helpful to just have a cap. I'm uh, familiar with one of the um, MIAA principals. She uh, attends the same church I do, and I, mm -hmm. she made a point to telling me how well Reading is regarded among uh, that group in terms of being a role model. You know, they kind of, I think you've said this previously, um, that uh, they view the town as um, kind of an example of what's done right and uh, great, great comfort in working with us and very predictable. Uh, yeah. Well, it, it, the, we meet usually in this room or, or the room next door with all the light department school and town unions mm -hmm. and um, usually the HR director and myself. Sometimes John or Colleen will come. Um, there has always been a good level of communication. Uh, now there's a brutal level of honesty. <laughs> None of us have time to waste. Here's a, here it is. So, um, you know, I, I really appreciate the fact that we're very lucky to have the union representation we do that understands this is not a us against them issue. Uh, one side's paying 71 percent, one side's paying 29 percent. It's it's a common problem. It's a common you know, issue. And uh, every single union in there is really really good to deal with on this issue. And that's why Maya holds us in high regard is because they see the cohesiveness and the fact that uh, Maya will come in and say, well, let's have a meeting so that we can tell you what we're going to say before we say it to the union. Oh, don't waste your time. Just come in and talk to all of us. They don't have other communities like that. Um, you know, it's just it's a good relationship. Um, Sharon has a couple things. She talked about one of them tonight, GASB 54. Does that need town meeting approval? Okay, that's what I thought. I was just thinking that as I was listening. Um, she's fully reviewed the fee structure and uh, procurements on hold just to see what FinCom ended Does that up. include the issue of the uh, depot stickers? That's the only one that the board didn't really address. And I wrote to the board a couple weeks ago saying I think it was too late for this budget cycle. Oh. But it's something that in, in time for next January 1st, stickers, which... Okay. You know, get ordered in the fall. So this is the FY 16, 16. status. Uh, when it says low, it means it's lo yes. low for yes. FY for this Yes, for this FY 15 year. Um, you know, it, it's... 16. I don't know how you solve it. I mean, it's it's two different things. It's compost and it's, you know, depot parking. Yeah. Maybe of course, depot stickers. parking today wasn't worth a lot, but yeah. most days it is. Um, but to address it for 16, you threshold is passed is that what you're saying no uh well jimmy you order the yeah, things so around november january yeah. and summer so um, the stickers so we order actually order the physical stickers that's to be for next year you know, okay october november okay so we should put a tickler in the file for september to bring this up I, I figured at this yeah, point sure. you know it's wait till the election the next board yeah. makes the call yeah. sometime in the summer you can have a discussion um I, there's there's a few different ways that are quite different you could go in this so and, and I don't, I couldn't think of any third thing or fourth thing to add in. It's like those are the two things. You know, they're together now, they don't have to be. And, and the question for the board is really is it something you want to tackle before you have an override discussion? Because it so. is a source of revenue that has not yet been fully vetted, I'll say. Um, and that's where we are on all the goals. I don't know if there's anything the board wanted to especially talk about tonight or plan to meet on. So, so I, I'm sorry, Bob. Can you just touch one more time on why the library building project is listed as 100%? Because that that that's not bringing everything else on here. I'm like in agreement on, but that's kind of I'm not I'm not following that one. I imagine that the library building project that was written up was the planning stage, and you know, having a committee re-engineered, having the plans all drawn up, and and off you go. Uh, you know, if it's really to finish the project, obviously it's well short of 100 it might be around 20. <laughs> depends on how you how you view it i think that we need to have your oversight in this oh it doesn't mean i'm stopped <laughs> right but it but but if it's not on here it's not part of your goals right 
Yeah, no, it's, it still is. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Is yeah, it fair you, to record it at 100%? I, you know, I don't know. Let's, let me look. I mean, the building's not even... The spade's just... But you can imagine it, can't you? <laughs> it's too bad Ruth's not here. She, she, uh, oh, how was the groundbreaking? It was really nice. It was, was there really ground to break or um, <laughs> no there was there was, there was a shovel, shovel. There was a shovel to break there was, was it a snow shovel DPW brought some ground in to break <laughs> you, you took all the shovels right here. I, I wish I could have been there I unfortunately it was had, nice. had to be in town so it was very cold so we did it in the uh, port cochere don't ask me how to spell that a little um, carport off I don't know 40 <laughs> people would you say 50 oh that's nice oh nice that's it was very nice, nice. Turned out. excellent so what, what we had listed for what that's worth under the library building project was transparency dash neighborhood impacts comma budget slash financial and then part two temporary space yeah I don't think that's so done both the temporary th space is done <laughs> well the neighborhood impacts we've had neighborhood meetings I mean obviously there's still impacts to be felt but um, you know we had a pretty nice neighborhood meeting over at the police station a few weeks back that's a prep meeting, right? The, the neighborhood yeah. impact will be as built, not as designed. Um, and we gave them what they mostly needed was contact information. When you have something yeah. going wrong, here's the guy's cell phone. Call him 24 hours a day. <laughs> and, you know, that's the way it is. So I, I suppose we should just and add the, on even to... Even from the budget perspective, I would say... Yeah, it's a little early know. to be saying to do a victory lap on right. the budget here. Absolutely. <laughs> we don't know what they're going to find. Right. All you need is one UST or some major construction issue. Well, well, now we're really into the project management phase. Yeah. As opposed to what was listed here. That's mm -hmm. the way I would look at it. Budget financial is fair to keep on there. Um, one, I, we could bring it up now or bring it up in the <coughs> 2020 discussion, but um, I've had a chat with a couple of the school committee members and visited the school committee, I don't know, three weeks ago now, to raise this thought of centralized um, to examine and, and exploit whatever <coughs> centralized activities there might be around uh, technology or legal or, 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 or. And I'm sure that they're small because in the grand scheme of things, the two groups do very different things. But that's not a, not a reason to postpone looking at it. I, uh, I haven't heard from John where his head's at, but I think the school committee will eventually get around to chatting about it. But that might actually be an objective that we want to formalize to look okay. at whether there's um, yeah. more efficiency to be gained by having one tech team versus two, one legal team versus two. I guess we already have one benefits. And I'm not aware enough to gauge what other opportunities there might be. But I, I got to believe with two groups, two parallel groups, there's more. Um, and again, that's in the spirit of getting it done before we go to the voter and say, mm. we need an override. One of the issues that would come up and I haven't had a chance to, I'll see John on uh, Thursday morning. Um, the towns that have done that have had mixed results. Mm. Uh, the towns that have done it well, um, one of the keys seems to be sharing physical location, mm. being the same building, superintendent and the town manager, or whatever. Force is. integration. Yeah. Mm. Um, any function that's going to be integrated, I mean, you know, again, we have Gail from Florida, so it's not perfect. It can be far, but if you're going to really try to harmonize two groups like that, they got to run into each other a lot. That makes yeah. perfect sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That does that make does. sense. And look around the building here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not happening in this building. Yeah. Plus, you get to be so. calm as a scale of secretarial. I, uh, I, look, I, that yeah. makes perfect sense. You can't have two, two, um, two arms of the same organization completely ignorant of each other. I, I'd, I'd support a concept like that. Yeah, and I'm not familiar enough with central office, um, Sharon probably is, to understand all the different jobs and roles to know is there an improvement to be made. There certainly is in communication. Mm -hmm. In the HR area, I mean, it comes up almost every day. I feel like the HR is one of yeah. those areas where it seems like there could be some yeah. Yeah. Something to be Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I will tell you point blank that we need another HR person we can't afford it in FY16, but the next year after that, we need to add a benefits person, period. Um, and if we can't do that, I'm just not sure we can function and keep serving. Because, again, we're also serving a light department. You know, the oh, amount of people right. being served out of our HR office, which is one person and one clerical person, mm -hmm. um, is intense. Yeah. And when she gets involved in projects, it's very hard to leave any bandwidth 
um, you, you know, you can imagine from your own jobs and your own lives what the benefits area is like these days, how complex it is. And we're dealing with retirees. <laughs> um, there's just a lot going on. There's a lot of rules changing. There's a lot of things to be abreast of. We do a pretty good job, but I have to say we're <coughs> understaffed. And whether combining that with the schools would be beneficial, I don't know exactly what it is they do and how they're staffed. I mean, I, I know one person, but I don't fully understand. We've never done a study to list, you do this, we do this. We seem to be getting more and more to do <coughs> in this building, mm -hmm. I will say that. And I've said that to John. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The outcome of such a work might be that you segregate the behavior differently. Today you both do it. It's not how do you work better together. Yeah. It's why don't you do it all and we'll, you know, build it into our budget, but we benefit from your focus mm -hmm. on that target yep. topic. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this is more making it a goal to have that dialogue and get that oh, list yeah. of what the areas might be. You know, the, the furthest along we got with um, John and with his predecessor, Pat, was technology. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been a keen interest of John's also. Uh, but Pat started off the discussion saying, tell me how to make this better and we had our two network administrators in the room at the time uh, Matt and uh, Kevin and um, you know a couple of us said a few words and then they talked the whole rest of the time and we had a hard time understanding anything they said <laughs> it was Peter John Doherty and myself and the two n network guys but what was very clear was it was extremely helpful for both those guys to talk to each other. They already had a good relationship. Mm -hmm. They already helped each other. But to formalize it just in that room that day and see that, oh, the bosses think this is a good idea, it really helped. Yeah. Um, and when you think of you know, technology in any organization, it's, it's always the thinnest staffed at the top. Yeah, you spend nothing on it, you'll never know. Yeah. So I'm more familiar with that, and, and I can tell you that there are obstacles because they use technology in the classroom very differently than the way we use it. But there's also a big difference in our library. We have staff technology and public technology. The library is very protective of their public technology. The foundation or the friends fund it, and they decide what to do because they're in touch with their public. But we control the funding and the rollout of staff because we want to all have staff do the same things. The schools, that divide is much larger. Mm -hmm. You know, all the teachers, how much freedom do they have? I don't really know now, but I can tell you two or three years ago when, when Matt Wilson was here, he was told to support, support any device that's brought into school, period. Mm -hmm. Just imagine, with all the kids and all the teachers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's certainly an area for discussion. Um, there's an opportunity to improve your security and your sense of it in terms of backup. I don't think we're so great at that. But in terms of saving money, I seriously doubt you're going to save a nickel. In I don't think it's necessarily savings as much as it is operational efficiency. Yeah. And, and that eureka moment you had, you just described <coughs> with two technology guys, mm -hmm. I expect you'd get the same <coughs> sense of, ah, this, there is a benefit here yeah. by bringing any two peers together in an organization and saying, do you have an opportunity to work together? Would you like to? come back and describe what you might get out of that arrangement. That's really the genesis of yeah, the I'll try the to think of other areas that kind of go together. There, there's a few, but they are kind of few and far between. It's generally central office down there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Okay. Um, any of the department heads here have anything to add in any of the areas? By all means. You could be home shoveling. <laughs> 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 What's going to happen Thursday night? Uh, Not that close. Three to six inches, depending on the track. It's, it's probably a plowable event. I mean, hopefully, we get enough snow removal done tonight to make room for the. And isn't there one looming on Sunday as well? Yeah, potentially. It's, <laughs> they don't want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. Because nobody wants to hear about it anymore. Exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But there's some potential there to it. My personal snow has no place to go. Like yeah. it's already above <laughs> my head. I was posted <laughs> on Facebook on a stepladder today, knocking the pile. <laughs> yeah, the, the one observation I'll make on goals from a, a high distance is um, there's too much going on and yet not enough. <laughs> it's in one of those, you know, there's too many balls in the air and you're not accomplishing. Well, we have accomplished some things. I, I, I think there's actually you know, the a zoning good and the level charter of coming in at the same time was huge. Yeah. Um, and just basically, was. you know, pushed a lot of other stuff aside. The area where I, I feel like 
you know, I really let the board down is uh, some of the real estate stuff is yeah, just yeah. fallen by the wayside, honestly. Um, you know, it's not a core mission of government. It would have been a nice thing to do. Maybe it would have helped some of these longer term goals, but just haven't gotten anywhere. We're not done yet. And we're not done yet, and it's really hard to deal with really long time horizon issues mm -hmm. that you have to when you've got so many other short ones. Firefighter, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looking at this summary in pages two and three, I have to say that on par, I am pleased and I think impressed with the level of progress. And we started yeah, this pro this we started this process. You did describe that it was a daunting list, that everything had was likely going to be high because we'd already called the lows out and we forced the process to get some lows and mediums back in. And the fact that you've got a goodly number of activities above 50%, and I concur with, with the potential exception of the library, <laughs> most of them. Yeah. Um, that's a remarkable state for the end of, mm -hmm. of uh, year one. That's remarkable. Yeah, I think that's true. Now, it's probably also true that going is going to get tougher here. The, the easy ones have gotten farther along, and what's right. left is harder. So, but I don't think we. I don't think we could have done much better. The town could have done much better. I'll tell you, from a meeting we had, I, I can't remember if it was a week or two ago, Dan was part of it, um, to hire the administrative services director. Um, you know, as that's been more fleshed out over the last two or three months, starting with the charter committee, it's going to be a huge benefit. If we, if we pick the right person and uh, they do a good job, it's going to fill a lot of the gaps in on this that are communication oriented, I'll say. And I, I, I will say, we have some impressive resumes. Yeah. So, so where are you on that process? So mm -hmm. you have, you're doing the resume We're doing the resume now? ratings this week. Excellent. Yeah. And, and you said you have a good number of uh, resumes? Approaching 30. Wow. Yeah, okay. and wow. virtually all of them are qualified. What are you trying to knock that list down to? Half. Yeah, well. half of it. I think we decided. For interview process? Yeah, I think yeah. we decided we wanted, it's such a personal job, yeah. personable job, right, that right. we want to see more people than you might normally want to see. Okay. Are you, have Gene you, and Jimmy are uh, helping. Have you at all considered doing phone screening interviews for the first, you know, the <clears> first <throat> time around so that you can, there, there will be people, yeah. you will probably um, be able to tell just from on the phone that they're not a good fit. Um, it's a low-cost way to cover it's a, a low-cost way to cover a lot of and, and less yeah. time as well right? you know what what it's going to come and down it's pretty to pretty traditional now. Is when we all meet again I don't know if we scheduled it is what's the next list look like is it 12 people or is it 25 and you can even do a, a group phone interview yeah. you know uh, we mean, thought of using the police department's approach, which is to run everyone through a hazing process for a day. That's what they do, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hazing's a bad word. Yeah, I was going to say, hasn't that, don't, isn't don't that? Don't say like, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I said amazing <laughs> process. Amazing. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, we there, thought that many different hands on and eyes on these people yes. was a good idea, including mm -hmm. people who are not part of our group. Absolutely. So, and then you just gather all the feedback. Because this is going to be, uh, you know, a department head with a lot of interesting divisions and interesting division heads, but uh, you know, this is going to be a, a figure in the community, basically to some degree. Thank okay, you, thanks. Um, with the time that remains, would the would the board uh, entertain me to walk through the uh, the presentation from uh, running <laughs> schools on the. the Naming process that they adopted. I know Mr. Halsey's in here, but John and I've already spoken on this. So, is there any opportunity to delay? Are you? Uh, I'm, I'm sort of lo losing steam. I can yeah, tell you, that you will not get my brain power on this. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, and, and I am. I have yet to really look at it all. Okay. I'm sure in the, in the light that you have, I, I think uh, it's light reading, and yeah, uh, we'll and you we'll promise we'll read it. Which has not happened yet. Okay, no problem. <laughs> so go back um, to shoveling. Yes, yeah, that's part of, been part of the problem. Okay. <laughs> John, sorry, John, is sorry. there anything I can do to help the board? Um, you might read it, Bob, and discern from your okay. perspective what you'd want to see either added or deleted from the document. And I, I'd like to look at it too as well with what Bob provided tonight from mm -hmm. uh, the previous Yeah, it'll be at. interesting. Actually, what's here is actually more expansive. This is actually trying to carve out, I think, Peter's work was a more expansive role for the selectmen in terms of all things naming and all things right. streets and all things 
we're narrowly focused on a naming of a physical entity, not a sidewalk, not a roadway, not a... Yeah. Peter, Peter's, this is actually a third perspective on the problem, which is what should the selectman role be in the, na in the broader context of um, nominating somebody, recognizing somebody, permanently naming something. We're trying to do something much more narrow around naming an entity in the town. But but should we be? I, I mean, it, it may be that it's, it's there's a, a time good idea to, to come up with that broader policy. I think it is, now, but there's but a. I think you're absolutely right. However, there's a time perishable aspect that mm -hmm. is being that the current question before right. us has mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. that would say take it out of order or take it ahead yeah. of yeah. Yeah. formalization. Yeah. One, one uh, aspect of the naming is when multiple individuals are good candidates for the name mm -hmm. and almost co-equals. How, yes. how do you handle how that? Do you do multiple names? Well, it's funny you say that. So, the, uh, For instance, the two names on the Morton Field. Well, there's, there's a proposal to address that, because yeah. one of those predates the other. Right. And and the proposal, at least in my mind, yeah, that, that one is. I thought what you're right. describing is two yeah. co-equals appear at the same time, and neither's got mm -hmm. precedence in time. Um, I think that's the nature of the question before us. This is a singular event, and ideally it's a singular individual. It's not a question of which of these three individuals gets this benefit, which is what the schools is challenged with. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we'll take it up at our next right. meeting. Hopefully we'll end as e e early as we did tonight. Okay, I'll put it on your next agenda. Okay. Um, as you'll notice, your agendas in the next two months are pretty light. I'm not sure okay. why, other than I'm probably just okay. too snow weary. Okay. <laughs> Um, but there's a lot of room for some things there. I know at one point we spoke of having a joint RMLD meeting. Is that something the board absolutely? Still interested? Yeah, we, do you uh, want to wait till the investigation is finished, or does yeah, that have any play? Um, I don't know. It, it doesn't. Do you really need to know? This is about integration. As what a team. I heard tonight is way more than I've heard the whole time. I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm staying away. Me too. But to some extent, this is about building bridges and yeah, trying to get right. common. I'm fine. As opposed to waiting until the dust settles. I think we want to be clear about what the agenda is and have agenda. that preset in advance. Exactly. And so okay. I, I, if and that can't be yeah. done, then, then I don't, I'm not in agreement with having just a group meeting where we so all walk in and kind of what, not what, sure what we're so addressing or what we're trying to accomplish. With that in mind, why, why don't we all send independently our thoughts as to what such a meeting might contain okay. to Bob. Okay. And yeah. Maybe you could That's assemble it. Probably the best, most practical answer is you have a chair, chair, General chair, manager, chair. town manager meeting that. first mm -hmm. and try to hammer out what is or is not going to be covered right. and see if there's agreement. Mm -hmm. yep. I'd be willing to no do that. No reason that can't be done. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> um, if there are no other questions, I'll entertain them. How about the school committee? Do you have any desire to sit down with them on anything? I haven't been paying attention. I know you've been talking. Absolutely. About I mean, this. look, the, we're, we're walking into um, financial headwaters here. Yeah. And mm -hmm. It's all hands on deck in terms of trying to find new and creative mm -hmm. thoughts. So okay. we're all in the boat together. I don't see why we wouldn't. Yeah, I agree we are. <clears throat> um, and, and I, you know, I but sense. this is different than a financial forum. This is, you know, FinCon can pretend if they want, but it's not a financial right. meeting. Right, right. Mm -hmm. It's more of a policy meeting, I would say. There's probably a little bit of strategy, too. Um, okay. By that I mean, and I'll just speak freely, um, I understand that Reading's school committee feels strongly about its spending per student. And whatever that number is, it's a fact-based assessment. Um, but that shouldn't necessarily influence other than how do, we, how do we do the best job we can. I mean, it's a fact-based statement, it's, and I'm sensitive to it. We're doing a great job, and we're getting great results. And we had to celebrate that. That's another one of those successes that we had to celebrate while we both collectively work on how do we improve our lot in life going yeah, that's forward. That's a problem. They don't look at it as a success. Well, but, but I don't, that's part of the reason to meet and kind of talk through that and say we, we're all on the same side here. This isn't a, you know, win-lose proposition. It's a win-win. Yeah. Yeah, some things can be lost in the sound bite. And to be fair, your comment about integrating earlier with chiefs, I think the same thing goes with boards. If you don't work with folks, there's an, I wouldn't say an animosity, but there's a, there's a yeah. distance between the groups. And you know, we, I meet with a lot of people independently, but that's not as a group level. We ought to, we ought to yeah. do that. So I'd, I'd very much, okay. What do you have a proposal when that might be possible? Well, you've got to decide whether it's before or after an election coming up. I think before would be awfully nice in March, but as a practical matter, I don't know what that accomplishes. 
Well, it gets us all on the same page with regards to the proposed yeah. spend, sure. and we could probably provide some support where it's appropriate, um, and maybe come up with some questions that answers to questions that are likely to get asked. And I think it'd be awfully nice. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure I'm fully up to date, but I know Chris is not running, and I know you're not running. So it'd be awfully nice to get their thoughts on the way out the door. Absolutely, yeah. I, I'd support a, a meeting in March if we okay. could. I think you can swing that. I'll I'll check with John. Thank you. I'll see. You. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Any other comments before we close? I make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? second? All those in favor? Or zero. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. <coughs> All right. Um,